I still have a dream. Dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I still have a dream. Dream deeply rooted in the American dream. Stand up for freedom together. Stand up for freedom together. Pray together to struggle together. Pray together to struggle together. Eating physical force for soul force. Eating physical force for soul force. We will be free one day. We will be free one day. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. We are free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. We are free at last. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am, of course, KRS-One, and the figures you see behind me in the dark are uh, the illustrious ones. I'll get back to them in a minute, but we're in Atlantic City right now, and um, shout out to everyone that is here actually on time. The, uh, the uh, piece that you just heard was produced by Sun One. Tribute, of course, to Dr. Martin Luther King, bringing out some of the more salient uh, uh, moments of his words and speeches. Um, nice mix on that. Hope you got a chance to hear that as, as we get started. So we're moving in actually closer to Dr. King's birthday as well, which is why that's also playing. But uh, like I said, we're in Atlantic City, and obviously I'm on tour. Well, not tour, but this is another date. Uh, obviously, it seems like every time, I, every Sunday, or you know, uh, we're here. Um, you know, we have some sort of concert or lecture or something we're doing, and it's interesting because it's that means that the lessons that you're getting are up to date, up to the moment lessons. 
for some, this might not mean anything now, but to the future, uh, looking for the credibility of real hip hop and when scholarship was really discussed, uh, how was it discussed? In what context was it discussed? It'll mean a lot to the future, to you, the future uh, who are studying this. So behind me, um, if you can see this guy right here <laughs> is, uh, is Tony Crush, formerly known as Tony Tone from the Cold Crush Brothers. The original Tony Tone is with us as well. A lot of big things going on with this brother right here. But I brought him along uh, as my DJ to actually do these shows with us. We already did one in Virginia, broke it down. It was great. So Tone is training with us right now, getting in the mix. And uh, he's bringing his expertise. He's getting used to our, our way of, of doing things. And you're going to see more of Tone, Tony Crush, uh, as we go into the future. Obviously, next to him is Minister Sun One. And, and uh, I'm going to get back to Minister Sun One in a minute because I want to shout out uh, uh, Ra Heru One. I'm getting ready to say some other name. Uh, <laughs> this is what it is right here. Oh, we know him as Ra Heru One, who has also joined us, as a matter of fact. And I thank you, actually, you, for joining us, uh, for coming out here and um, and, and, and volunteering. Uh, uh, Heru One was also with us at the show, shooting, filming, doing whatever else needed to be done, assisting. Uh, and all of us are here, really, on a volunteer basis. Uh, we're all just coming together uh, to just make it work. And, and, and this is what it is. So, so this is the Temple of Hip Hop. As you know, every Sunday at 12 o'clock on the East Coast, American East Coast time, we get together like this to read uh, the gospel of hip hop. We're reading through the gospel of hip hop. Uh, because we're training scholars, we're raising up scholars to be able to teach the gospel of hip hop, to be able to teach hip hop correctly. And when I say correctly, of course, you know, I don't say that with any ego on it, but the what we say is the correct teaching of hip hop is not so much the teaching itself, but that all the teachers share the same language, that we share the same language. You can teach whatever you want. You Matter of fact, you have to teach from your own experiences, but the foundational language by which we teach from is the unity of the culture itself. It is the power by which all teachers of hip hop share upon. And that's what makes you an authentic teacher of hip hop, that you know the language. And the language is being taught right here with the gospel of hip hop. And so, and so this week's lesson uh, is on the seventh overstanding. We're starting a new uh, overstanding. It's the seventh overstanding. We're going to talk about life, death, the control of your reality in that sense, uh, and 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 also about creation. Um, uh, well, as a matter of fact, we'll just get right into it. Before I begin, you know, the Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society. Our main aim is to preserve hip hop by preserving hip hoppers. That's why we do this service. We are not just doing hip hop, we are hip hop. And so by preserving ourselves, unifying with ourselves, loving ourselves, we preserve hip hop. We are it. Hip hop does not appear anywhere else in the world except when we show up. You can't go to hip hop, you can't eat hip hop, you can't wear hip hop. Uh, hip hop is nowhere in the physical world. It's a metaphysical concept, a shared idea, a behavior, an attitude. And those that hold the original attitude are those that are, that are the teachers of the culture. You know, just because you may be a pioneer of the culture doesn't mean that you're an actual scholar of the culture. And I say that respectfully because a lot of people contribute a lot to hip hop, no doubt. Uh, there's a lot of contributors. But only a few of us actually were paying attention uh, at the time of hip hop's birth. And, and even now, you know, as we do this service, only a few of us are really paying attention to, uh, to, to our right now moment. You know, what we are doing right now, 
Um, Tone, I know uh, Tone uh, here has tons of shows, uh, recorded shows and flyers, and even his own self. I mean, this is a walking history. This this brother here, uh, uh, I was uh, I would say Tony Crush, but uh, as D, as DJ Tony told of the Cold Crush, um, this brother has is in every uh, book. Um, a hip hop book you can think of. You can't discuss hip hop without discussing the Cold Crush, uh, and you can't discuss hip hop without Tony Tone. I, I was at the um, the American, uh, the African American uh, Museum, National Museum, African American National Museum. I know I'm chopping the title up, uh, and after I was shocked to see myself there, <laughs> I turned and I saw Tony Tone. I have a, a picture of, of you Tone with Charlie Chase, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, working out with the coal crush right there in the museum, preserved for all history. And 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 the museum is only interested in first and what caused this to be that. And so it's it's definitely um, an honor anytime we can have our session with real hip hop in the building. Uh, that is always good. But as you can see, we're in a hotel, so anywhere we are, the temple of hip hop is. And that means anywhere you are, the temple of hip hop is. Oh, just before I begin, make sure you got this or can get this. This is the 2022 calendar right here. We, we mentioned this last week. Shout out to Desire. Shout out to God One. Shout out to everyone who had something to do with this. Um, this is crazy. This is what you need on your wall right now. This is the calendar right here. And it's just a nice collector's item. Don't wait five years from now. People be like, yo, did you get the first one? No, I didn't. Ah, this is the rawness right here. So so I just wanted to mention that. Anything you want to say to that, someone, before I keep it moving? Yeah, I'll slide right in real quick. Um, I'm going to put it up on the screen, but you can order your calendars right now uh, by sending $25 to... T-O-H-H, Temple of Hip Hop, T-O-H-H, Calendar, at Gmail. Just send $25, put a note in the memo that you're ordering the calendar. Um, clearly, that's the only thing that's being sold on there. Uh, <laughs> so, obviously, we'll know. Uh, but make sure that you include uh, your address so that we can take care of that. Uh, and it'll actually be being sent to you by Minister Zinaru. Um, who's printing them out right now as we speak. Uh, they should be done before the week is over, and he'll be fulfilling the orders uh, ASAP. So get your calendar. Uh, this is this is the first. This really is a collector's item, so know what it is. Know what it is. Know what it is. And so there it is. Uh, I'm going to start this read uh, right now. And... Um, Shout out to everybody in Virginia uh, that was at the show. Shout out to Slick Rick as well, Big Daddy Kane, and everyone else that was there. Uh, shout out tonight, uh, Atlantic City, um, same usual suspects uh, will be there. I think Kid Capri is there tonight, DJ and two. Um, it's going to be a wild night tonight in Atlantic City. But uh, I'm going to start this read. And uh, and get it and, and get it popping. Turn your gospel now to page three three six. We're on page three three six. Page three three six of the Gospel of Hip Hop. We're reading the seventh overstanding. That's the seventh overstanding. Okay, the seventh sense. Now this is a deep chapter, so you know I'm gonna read my normal pace, but uh, get into this. Open your mind. Take a deep breath on this one. Okay, here we go. Know this. We are the seeds. We are the spiritual seeds planted in this dark world. And dark here is not used negatively. Uh, as you know, as we get down to this other part about in dark and mint, dark is not the absence of light. It is the other light. Know this, we, we are seeds. We are spiritual seeds planted in this dark world. It is not the body that we are. It is the flower within it. 
the fruit within it, the spirit within the seed body that we are. And really get that. I mean, really take a moment. That's why I say I'm speaking words, but these words are pointing to something way greater. Take a moment and take this in. I'll hit you with it one more time. Know this. We are the seeds. We are spiritual seeds planted in this dark world. It is not the body that we are. It is the flower within it, the fruit within it, the spirit within the seed body that we are. The body is our protective shield, our husk that houses the spirit seed inside, planted within this world to sprout at our time of shedding, whenever that is. In reality, there is only creation. In reality, there is only one thing going on daily, an acronym obviously for God. The true concept of creation has no room for destruction. All is creation. This overstanding explores the illusion of death and gives some examples that might point the way to the reality of life. Now, this is a highlight here. We're going to highlight three and four. Let's highlight paragraphs three and four as I read them through. Here's paragraph three and four. These are highlight. Know this. There is only creation and further creation. Death as destruction is an illusion. The term destruction only implies the act of deconstructing or breaking something down. However, even to destroy is to create. Did you get that? Even destruction must be created. Even death is a new birth, a new creation, a new reality, a new thing that your essence is experiencing. Consider the fact that destruction, for the most part, is simply another form of creation. Again, destruction must be created. Therefore, whatever is real cannot be destroyed. It, it can only be changed. Therefore, creation cannot be destroyed. It is the only real thing happening. Energy cannot be destroyed. It only changes. Now, just highlight three and four on that because Normally, just on these two these two paragraphs alone, I would set up a PowerPoint presentation and start pulling out all types of science and quantum mechanics and all types of biology to show in that world what this is saying right here, that energy is not really destroyed. It changes. Nature transfers with itself. It exchanges with itself. Some scientists even go as far as to say that nature is a closed system, that everything within nature is self-contained, even, even to the point of death and the recycling of nature, how, na how nature recycles is proof of reincarnation. That's in science, in that sense. We don't rely on science. We rely on our logic, common sense, and reason. But in those areas where logic and common sense can be found in science, you take a look at it. Same thing with spirituality, philosophy, and so on. As long as it's making sense, <laughs> we're with it. Uh, and when you look at nature, you notice how in a natural situation, everything's exchanged. Even something dead gets eaten. It's, it's still good for somebody uh, as it goes even into the soil to fertilize the soil for some more good. Nature is creative highly created. There is no destruction. That's a human thing. And to sit for a minute, just sit there and think about this for a real minute, because this is what leads to immortality. When you realize there is no destruction, there's only change. So when you realize that there really is no real destruction, it's just things are changing. And, and I guess you would say in a human sense, destruction is when you can't use the thing anymore. <laughs> it's like when something has changed so much 
that it is it's unusable to you is basically de destroyed or deconstructed for yourself. But when you really think about it, even something like if I drop a glass and it breaks, psh, I've created something. Nothing was destroyed. That nothing has, has deconstructed. The, the glass is unusable. It's in pieces. Okay, that's what happened to that. But it's now something else. The glass is still there. It's still there. But it's something else now. And to realize that level of creativity brings us to the center of hip-hop, brings us to the center of, of a lesson that, that we taught earlier about everything is also something else. Like just because something is broken doesn't mean that it, it is um, dead or, or destroyed. Um, you know, referring, referring back to Grandmaster Flash's experiments with the, tur with the turntable, some would say that, you know, to, to, to pull the records back and forth is destroying them. Uh, and in some cases, you know, DJs did have to repurchase some of their records because that constant cutting on the record would dull out the grooves in the wax. So sometimes you would, you know, if your record was cut so much, when you threw it on, it would be like, Psh, yeah, and then the music would come on because the, you just rubbed it, you completely rubbed it out. But guess what? Even that crusty sound, that crackly now that's a program in a computer that you can add to your music to make it sound like what the DJs were considering a mistake, not even a mistake but just I wore the record out it's crackly, I have to go buy two more records I wore these out, but no as the DJs were playing these crackly records before they wore them out, these were considered, you know, uh, errors, mistakes. People, they dealt with them, but you clearly needed two more records. But obviously now later on, these so-called mistakes or errors or in inefficiencies are now programs that you can add to your um, uh, to, to your music. Now, if you want it to sound crackly and scratchy and, and all crazy like the way it used to sound when we played vinyl records, uh, you can go get that. And, and this is just an example of creation. Creation is invincible. Creation is immortal. And sometimes we downplay creation for destruction. We put destruction over creation, and it's not like that because even destruction must be created. That means creation cannot be destroyed. Try to hear what I'm saying here. Let's move on. Paragraph five. Once you are, once you are, or it is, you and or it can never not be. I, I say this all the time. Now that hip hop exists, it will never not exist. So 300 years from now, there will still be hip hop. What are we doing today as first generation hip hoppers? What are we doing today to enhance the life and empower the lives of those that are to come after us just 100 years from now? Once you are it, I mean, once you are or it is, you and or it can never not be. You and or it can only be changed, transformed, or further created. Your physical form can change, but you will never not exist. You, the, the essence, the seed will never not exist. Something has to happen to a person. Just think about that for one minute. For, for death to be real, it has to happen to you. So think about what's happening to the thing that, that death is happening to is not dying. Okay, it ha death has to happen to something. Or it's not death, it's something else that we don't even have a word for. But 
the idea of this conscious life ceasing has to happen to a conscious being to even know that that's happening. I told you to take a deep breath. You are the essence of you. And if you are to overcome the illusion of death, it is you who must decide to be and live as the real you right now. Nothing real can ever be destroyed. The real you is not physical. You are the actual breath of God. And that's an ancient uh, uh, moment, uh, uh, piece we put there. Uh, uh, the, Kab the Kabbalah, the Jewish mysticism, uh, calls it the Ruah, the Ruah, R-U-A-H, the breath. Uh, the very word spirit, um, from the word spiritus, uh, points to the breath. Everything about the spirit, at least in Western uh, philosophy and theology, spirituality, starts with the breath. Starts with the breath. And that's why we snuck that in there, just so you know, those are, those are the scholars on that. Just know that that's what that is. You are the, we're using this analogy because it's common amongst mystics. The breath of God. And there's a lot to that. Reading on. The real you is the animating essence, the breath of the great spirit. You are not your body. Notice how this is keep getting emphasized. It's actually an affirmation. You are not your body. You are the breath or consciousness that must continuously enter the body for the body to have life and ideas. If you, the breath, are separated from the physical body for just a minute or more, the first thing that the body loses is consciousness. Therefore, let us consider humanity as not the billions of people on this planet, but instead let us consider that humanity is found in the air, substance, that such human animals are breathing as an aid to our disciplinary practices over the cravings of the body. Let us enter our physical bodies as opposed to being them. Let's enter the body as opposed to being it. Right now, most people are stuck over years of, of this habit of only being the physical body. They're only being the physical body, and they have nowhere else to go but wherever the physical body can go and whatever the physical body can do. But it is known, proven, and it is a fact that the you, the actual essence of you, is not the physical body. And those of you that, that have caught my lecture on, on this, uh, some call it the fifth dimension, um, some call it the rock star lecture, uh, you'll notice that that exercise that, that we do, I'll point you to that exercise right now, which is to, to speak to yourself. Say, matter of fact, let's just go through it right now. The word is uh, temple of hip hop. Okay, that's the, the phrase, is temple of hip hop. Let's say this to ourselves without any, without moving, without speaking or using anything physical. Let's just say this phrase, temple of hip hop, to ourselves. Here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. Now, we just said, if you follow this correctly, temple of hip hop. You said this in your what? I can't say your mind, your being, your what? Something just spoke without the use of your mouth. Slow down and think about this. Let, let's do it again. Temple of hip hop on the count of three. One, two, three. What is that? What is that that just spoke? Or who is that? Even deeper, where is that? But let's come back to who is that that just spoke without the use of the mouth? You have obviously at least two voices. At least two voices you have. This one that you're hearing now, and there's another inner voice. 
that actually can speak and hear itself speaking. That's the other side. So there's an inner voice and an inner ear that hears the inner you. There's an inner you that is speaking without the mouth, hearing without ears, and actually seeing without eyes. Now you have three senses, at least three. Okay, you can see, you can hear, and you can speak. Well, speaking is not a sense. Let's just call them abilities. Seeing, speaking, and hearing without the use of your larynx, mouth, eyes, or ears. This is a fact. You can, you can live in this right now. And the point to this whole lesson is if you can speak, hear, and see now without your eyes, without your mouth, and without your ears, when these stop operating, this other you continues. It's this other being that has to experience the breakdown of the physical body. Otherwise, it, there's no existence to either the physical body or this other voice. And we know it exists because we, we're it. We, we, we just expressed it. But see, here's the thing. If somebody doesn't produce a television show with lights and, and special effects, you don't even believe me. If somebody doesn't come along with a PhD or a doctor in front of their name or, or a swami that just came out of the Himalayas, maybe, or somebody surrounded by candles or I, whatever it is, it, it, you're not gonna you're not gonna take this seriously. And this is 99% of the people in the world today. This is straight up facts. You are not the body. You are the spirit within it. And this little exercise that I put forward proves it. Proves it outright. Proves it. You can, you can talk to you. You can talk all day. And if you really want to get live, like I said, we're just stopping on who is that. Go further and ask where is that because this is where the mystics talk about the kingdom of heaven right here this is where the this is this is it this is this is it and they say the kingdom of heaven is spread out all over people just don't see it and why they don't see it because it's a consciousness thing you have to realize heaven you have to grow into it it's not in the sky. It's not behind a wall. It's not, nah, it's your sight that has to realize the truth. And when you realize that truth, what happens? It sets you free. Let's continue reading. Here we go. This is, I'm, I'm gonna hit six again. The real you is the animating essence, the breath of the great spirit. You are not the body. This is the realization right here. You are the breath of consciousness that must continue, continuously enter the body for the body to have life and ideas. If you, the breath, the real you is out here, it's not in here. You're not hearing me. If you, the breath, are separated from the physical body for just a minute or more, the first thing that the body loses is consciousness. So where is consciousness? Obviously, consciousness is not in this physical body. If we, we're drawn in breath, <sighs> breathe. And the more we breathe, the more conscious we become. The minute we stop breathing, our awareness, it, we, we can't even stay awake. We can't stay aware. Imagine that. If you are separated from the physical body for just a minute or more, the first thing that the body loses is, is consciousness. Therefore, let us consider humanity as not the billions of people on this planet, but instead let us consider that humanity is found in the air substance that such human animals are breathing. As an aid to our disciplinary practices over the cravings of the body, let us enter our physical bodies as opposed to being them. Let us consider ourselves as consciousness, the breath of God, the breath of God spirit. And when such a spirit consciousness is inhaled into the animal, the animal is made to act like the consciousness that has entered it. Such an animal is being human. 
or acting human. However, the true human, the breath of God, is what is causing your physical body or animal natural self to act human. Like, like, well, let me, let me finish this out. This is what we call a human being. Human beings are natural earth creatures, animals, being or acting human. I don't have enough time to go into this one. Uh, but this, this points you back to paleoanthropology and the origins of humanity. Um, and there's all types of freaky uh, uh, theories and all types of craziness that comes right back to here about the animal becoming human. What is it that makes us so unique in the world? So so unique in, in the, in, in, or, or I should say in the earth. Uh, what makes us so unique? You know, animals, you know, like, like chimpanzees, we're 99.9% .9 chimpanzee. Okay, so when people call you a monkey or an ape, it's, it don't, I, I don't know why people get upset with that. Don't call me no ape. I ain't no ape. Yes, you are. You're 90, all humans are 99.9%. .9 Do you understand that number? That number's crazy. 99.9% .9 chimpanzee. That's us. Okay, but somehow something happened. And here we are reading books and talking over computers. How did that happen? How did this monkey actually do that? So you, so you might want to take a look at, at this idea of this is what we call a human being. Something happened to the monkey, to the ape, uh, to a, a being that would make us into what we are right now. And I'm not saying that it's good even. <laughs> because, you know, if you enter democracy, if you enter the concept of, of democracy, well, we're the minority on the earth, in, in the earth. You know, the rest of the world is saying that. Humanity is, is, the, is the piece of the earth that's not saying, that's not going along with the program, that's unnatural, supernatural. Uh, you know, out of harmony with nature, cutting down trees, you know, this kind of stuff, polluting the oceans. We seem to be the only ones doing that one. Uh, so there's something to be said about the animal world and human being or animal being and human being. We tend to look down on animal being uh, and look up to human being as if this is some sort of privilege. But when we look at what, what what this human being is doing to nature itself, and then you look at the 99% of the rest of the living beings in this planet, you've got to take a look and say, we're doing something wrong. Uh, you know, it's arrogant to think that humanity is on this planet and we all right. Uh, that's just arrogance on another level. Because when you look at it, we're not. When you really look at the facts and you look at reason and you look at it with logic and you look at the evidence of what's going on, human, what does it mean to be human? That's Dr. Cornell West, shout out to you all day. Dr. Cornell West asks this question all the time. What does it mean to be human? <laughs> that, that's such a cold question. It's just, it just hits you right there. Like, and even can you even answer it? What does it mean to be human? human. And that's what we're discussing here. Let's go further with it. I'm on paragraph nine. However, the true human is not a physical creature at all. The true human is actually a non-physical being invading the body of an animal. Take a look at it. Consciousness is in the air. Stop breathing. You're not conscious anymore. Something comes out, the oxygen out there, it makes us conscious. Now get this, other animals are breathing the same air. Why are they not conscious? Or what is consciousness? And so the, because maybe they are conscious. And just because they refuse to speak English, we call them animals. Huh. Remember at one time, black people, this... This ape man that you're looking at right now was considered three-fifths of a human being according to the most educated people of the time. Treated like an animal. 
I mean, slow down and think about this. The this black man is in front of you right now, and the black men behind me were animals by science and religion. Said these are animals, straight up and down. Now, when do we become human? And who's determining what is human? And who's determining what is human consciousness? What does it mean to be human? Because at one time, this African animal was considered just that, animal, channel. So think about this slowly for a minute when you think about your humanity. What does it mean to be human? Does it mean rape, robbery, theft, lying? Is that human? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. What does it mean to be human? Does being human means all good? Being civilized, forgiving, understanding, seeking knowledge, inventive, creative. Is that human? Or is that a dream and a fantasy as well? What, what does it mean? To be human, that's what we're investigating at this particular portion of our read uh, right here. The true human is actually a non-physical being invading the body of an animal. And this is where the struggle between the natural self and the spiritual self begins. This is it, y'all. This is it. This body is no different than any animal in the in in the wild. Your body is not, you are like this is how they can actually experiment on mice, which are also 99.9% has a human anatomy, a, a rat. Okay, a, a rodent. You can experiment on a rat and get a similar reaction, if not the same reaction, on a human physiology. We're no different from any of the other animals in the wild. It's our own psychology that got us thinking we some kind of special thing. Now, I must admit, I am impressed with humanity. From what I see, most of these animals look like they don't know what's going on. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it looks like to me as a human. But as a human, I can also backtrack and realize, nah, there's more of them doing something than me, than my kind. When earthquakes come, they know when to leave and when to, when to get out of here. I don't know that. I don't know that. When storms come, I have to rely on forecasters and satellites. They know exactly when the storm's coming, where to go, how to go, and when to go. I don't know that. And I'm supposed to be a natural human being. I'm supposed to be with nature. You drop me in a forest for three days, I'm dead. OK, but I'm a natural human being. I'm supposed to be able to survive in the forest. You natural, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe we're not developing as human beings. Maybe we're being grown like like crops for the workforce. Maybe it's something we should really think about your human development. What does it mean to be a human being? Does it mean a job? Think about that. Does it mean a job? Does it mean, you know, uh, not fulfilling your purpose and not connecting the job with the purpose? There's a job. Now come back over here like you in college. You in college, you know, you want to be uh, a, an electrical engineer. You're like, yo, I know I got this. I'm an electrical engineer. I get down with electronics. You enter the school, they tell you, you got to play the flute first. You're like, wait a minute. I came here to be a business major. I came here to be a secretary, business major, CEO. I want to run my own business. That's what I came here for. Well, wait a minute. It's such a thing called required course. You got to learn about African-American studies or something. You have nothing. And you black, too. <laughs> so you, got, you got to learn this first, required course. And I'm not dissing, though. I'm, I'm, I'm really being sarcastic. But my analogy is true. Think about at this very moment, if you waste in your life, that's the purpose of this right here, okay? If nobody's telling you, if nobody's even asking you these questions, this is the purpose of this particular gathering right here and what we're reading right here. What does it mean to be human? And, that, and the offshoot question to that is, are you wasting your life? 
straight up and down. What does it mean to be human? What are you doing? And what are you doing to be human? Where's your human responsibilities? What do you do and you know you do to be human? Because these are the questions that define your being. And if you're, I mean, you know, you could be spiritual all day. You could be philosophical all day. You could be creative. You could be talented, you know, creatively talented, great artist, or so on. But if you cannot answer the question about yourself, then all that talent is going to some, to the benefit of somebody else because there's no you. There's, there's no center. There's nothing that you've decided upon. There's nothing that you put your stake in the ground and said, this is me, and I will define myself by this. Because, and again, most people don't do this because they're afraid that if they say, I'm going to put my stake in the ground and this is what it's going to be, oh man, I'm going to miss out on other opportunities and things I could have had because I stuck it out here. And then, you know, and I missed out on these other opportunities. And let me, let me, let me be the first one to tell you, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're going to miss out on a lot. But who are you? A cat don't miss out on what dogs get. Lions don't miss out on what elephants get. Elephants don't miss out on what the eagle get. Who are you? Who are you? Is this a, what does it mean to be human? What does it really mean? Who are you? And this is the moment of decision. This is the moment of decision. Some of you right now are at a crossroads in your life. Right now as I speak to you, you got to make a decision. You got to go right or left right now. And I tell you, the first answer is usually the best answer. Not that the second one is wrong, but if you got to make a decision to go right or left, your first inclination is usually the best one. Usually the best one. The, the divine mind speaks first, always. Then there's doubt. <laughs> then there's guilt. Then there's judgment. Then there's, But none of these can happen until the first thought happens. Always remember that. The second thoughts, third thoughts, they cannot occur until the first thought occurs. That's when you know it's God. Your first thought, go do it. I have no way, I have no way to do it. I have no way. To... That was after. <laughs> the first thought was go do it. The second thought, well, I don't have no money. Uh, I don't have no time. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, uh, my friends, my family. My, uh, 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 that's all the other stuff. But what was the first thought? Do it! Now you got to come up with courage. The only way you're going to get courage is by defining yourself. When you define yourself, you made a decision about yourself. I'm telling you this from straight experience. I made my decision when I was about 13, 14 years old. I said, I'm hip-hop. Well, the word didn't exist then. But I saw people rapping and stuff on the streets, catching these guys' tapes. That was later in life. Around 20, I started hearing Cold Crush tapes. Uh, but... No, when I was young, it was in the street. <laughs> it's in the, in the park. So, okay, I said, yeah, this is what I'm doing uh, with my day. Uh, this is it. I'm going to be an MC. I'm going to be a TJ. This is what I'm doing. And a little philosophy on the side. But guess what? I had to give up a lot. You know, to this day, I never received a Grammy Award. <laughs> and I laugh because, I'm, of course, I'm not looking for these things. But... I'm, you know, I'm a well-known artist. Uh, I'm well-known. Uh, I will say that humbly. Uh, my work is well-known. And there are certain institutions in, in this world that just ignores me. <laughs> like, and it's dope. And it's not just me. There's several artists that, you know, you don't see them. You know, these are the greats. You know what I'm saying? You don't see, like, shout out to my dude Maxwell real quick. Let me just shout Maxwell real quick. One of the greats, okay? They barely play the man's music. Barely plays me, barely sees videos, something, but go to the concert. Gee, throw on any of his classics. It's great. And there's a bunch like this, even within hip hop, of great artists that are just being overlooked. Nobody, and we don't care. You know, I'm, I'm only mentioning it because you have to decide upon who you are. Are you an artist? Or are you a music merchant uh, who needs to be on the billboard chart? I need to be recognized by some authority of the white mainstream in order for me to feel good about my art. If that's you, then there it is. Nobody's, there is nothing to say. 
write, act, write your books for the book award, write, you know, aspire to whatever you think greatness is. Nobody can argue with that. But when you're trying to decide who you want to be, you're going to have to decide whether these things are important because you are going to give up a lot on any path that you take. You're going to give up a lot. So you have to decide. So now how do you decide? You go back to the ancients. You go back to the time-tested knowledge. Other people have given up their whole lives. Whole generations have asked this question. And you go back to them and you ask them, what should I do? The world has great opportunities, but I know my spirit is calling. What do I do? Then the answer comes. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Then you come with the, but, um, well, there, that's it. You got the answer right there. That's it. What does it profit a man to lose it? What's more important to you? To be fresh before God and whack to the world? Or fresh before the world and whack to God? What's more important to you? And no answer is the wrong answer. <laughs> no answer is the right answer. But the answer defines who you are. Period. It just defines who you are. And when you make that definitive decision, now you can get that. Now the power starts coming. When I made my decision, I had to live homeless for about five years. It was hard. It was hard. I ain't going front. It was hard. Five years, homeless, in the streets of New York, cold, every winter, it was madness, okay? Every year. And I stayed on my affirmation. I'm the, I'm an MC, I'm a rapper, I'm going to make it, I'm blah, 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 blah. But I, st I stuck my, my thing in the ground, my stake in the ground. I said, this is what it's going to be. And I, and I lost opportunities. I lost mad opportunities. When I finally got my, my career together, started rapping, making a little money, got a little record company helping me out, this is what it is. I said, you know what? I, I'm, I'm not going to be that MTV artist. I was. Oh, my career first started. Oh, it was great. We was a young MTV rap. Ah, BET, it was cool. It was, it was the greatest. And then the bill comes. Well, we need you to, uh, to come. You know, we only want your party stuff. You know, remember that record you did? The P is free. Uh, you know, Super Bowl. Remember Super Bowl? Yeah, we need you to do that. Well, I got this new single called You Must Learn. And my people need to hear this. Well, you know, this is not that that kind of show. You know, Chris, the demographics. is. Uh, I've heard these real conversations. I've had these real conversations where you have to decide your manhood right there. I ain't doing the show. Oh, 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 oh. We got 35,000 for you. We got 50 grand for you. I don't care. You're not taking, this is who I am. If you can't take who I am, you can offer me a million dollars. You're not taking, you're not getting me away from me. Okay, that's the end of it. But look at what I just said. Come on, man. You got a family. You got kids you're taking care of. You got bills. Somebody offering you $60,000, $70,000 to play yourself. <laughs> okay. A, lot of, a real father would. A real father? Well, how big is the thong in the bra set you want me to put on? How long do I have to put it on for? I, just five minutes, maybe just. You have to consider your children. You have to consider the mortgage. You got to consider the, the life you live in. And that's what I'm saying. I want to put that on it, too, because this ain't about no pride. And yeah, I, I could turn away a million dollars. No, you can't. No, you can't. If you live in a real life. No, you can't. You can't turn that away. But if you live in a real spiritual life, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because you put your stake in the ground. And you said, you know what? Nothing is on top of my God. 
and my ancestors and my principles. Why? Because that's what brought me here. When none of y'all was around, I prayed to something and something answered me. When none of y'all was around, I was protected by something. When nobody was around, the opportunities came somehow. So now I'm going to front on that because somebody's offering me cash? Nah, that's not how it works if you walk in the spiritual life. Only for those that are walking the spiritual life. And that's what we're reading here. Hip-hop as a spiritual life. You got to have some integrity about yourself. Some dignity about yourself. And that comes with deciding who you're going to be. Decide who you're going to be. I am hip-hop. Period. I'm locked in. Okay, I'm locked in. If I went out right now and said, no, nah, I'm not hip-hop no more, nobody would even believe me. <laughs> I'm locked in. My mouth is so big. I done said this so many times and there's so many people on so much stages. Even if I said right now, no, I'm really jazz, y'all. I'm, I'm going to hit this jazz horn. Then like, Chris, get the fuck out of here. Like, get back. We want hip-hop. Okay, this is what it is. This is what it is, though. But as hip-hop, I give up a whole lot of other opportunities. Straight up, it ain't easy being hip hop. Don't get it twisted, okay? People don't want this thing to exist and continue on and so on. People are always looking down on us and to this very day, 2022. People still look down on hip hop. It ain't real music. People jealous of us, don't want to give us what they give other artists and this kind of stuff. It's still the same way. It's still the same way. We, we, we missing mad opportunities. When you stay true to something. But are we really missing something though? That, look at the wording here. Missing opportunities? Nah, it ain't my opportunity to get. My opportunities are found right here with hip hop. That's where my opportunities are found. Now, if somebody else outside got something for me, I'll take it. No problem. But you're not taking me outside of my culture. You're not taking me outside of my principles. When I come, this is what I come with. If you accept that, then you accept me. And we could do business, we could rock, we could do whatever. But the minute you start telling me about something that's not me, to my core, then I have to say respectfully, I bow out. I'm sorry, my G, that's just not me. I can't do it. And I missed the opportunity. Yes, there's money I've missed, awards, presentations, different types of opportunities through my entire career that I've missed. Because I said, no, it's not my, the, that's not where I'm going. My principles are not over there. And I'm led by principle. So if the principles ain't over there, I'm not going over there. And I'm saying this to you to say that, so here I am coming up on my 57th birthday in August this year. I'll be 57 this year. If you want to learn how to get to 57 with a smile on your face, you better listen to what I'm saying to you right now. Okay. If you really want to get the, if you want to get here, okay. Listen to what I'm saying to you right now. Choose who you are going to be and stick with it. You're going to lose opportunities in these other worlds. But guess where the opportunity really will come for you? It'll come for you, to you, through you. That's how you get it. It's going to come through you. Opportunities don't come to you. They come through you. And if they're coming through you, that means you got to be helping other people too. Another piece. I mean, come on, I, I, I gotta finish this read. But 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 this is this is the this is the essence of what we deal with when we talk about integrity, dignity, you know, the essence of a person. You ask these questions right now. Who am I? What do I stand for? What do I stand upon? And for real. Because the for real part is the part that brings the magic. When you're standing on something for real, that's when the magic comes. The unexpected blessings, the unexpected opportunities, the, the guidance that you needed and didn't and wasn't able to do yourself. Once you know who you are and not somebody telling you who you are, you deciding who you are, then you know who you are. Then you know who you are because you've decided on yourself. Now you're going to create yourself and so on. I say it all the time. There's no school for KRS-One. 
I didn't go to school and they gave me a degree that said you KRS one now. Uh, there's no school for for Tony Crush. There's no school for Sun One. There's no school for a Haru One. Ra Haru One. You know there's no school for that. No, that's not true. As a matter of fact, that's probably the first school. <laughs> Come to think of it, uh, one of the first universities was probably under the title of a Ra Haru One. Uh, there probably was a school for that actually. But you get my point. This brother had to decide himself that he's going to make his claim on Ra Haru One. Minister Sun One had to make his claim and say, no, I am Minister Sun One. Tony Crush had to say, no, I am. And on top of that, Tony Crush back in the days had to decide, no, we're going to be the dopest group out. You know, uh, 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 we're going to be the dopest group out, Shh, dopest hip hop group out, um, and went about it and came up with routines and came up with all type. Why? Because he wasn't, you know, um, you know, he wasn't DJ Larry uh, Larry Parker, <laughs> you know, he was DJ Tony Tone. And, and when you put your stake in the ground and say, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be KRS-One, the magic starts. The magic starts. The magic comes around the name, comes around the name that you decide to call yourself. And then you just jump into the experience of the name that you just named. That's it. This is the secret. This is, the, this is it. You name it, then you claim it. That's it. But you got to name it first and your heart got to be in it and you got to be serious and la, 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 la. So let's continue. Know this. I'm on paragraph uh, 10. Know this. Your physical body is formed by the earth's animal intelligence in preparation for the incoming breath of God, you. However, it is you who must tame the cravings and desires of your natural animal self. We was dealing with this in the other uh, 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 pieces as well. Notice how we always come back to taming those cravings, getting ahead of those desires and, and, and um, um, temptations, not for the sake of the temptation, not for you know depriving yourself of the joys in your life, but to prove to yourself your own spiritual strength. It's like lifting spiritual weights. Um, uh, in, 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 in that sense. Uh, let me just read that uh, one more time. However, it is you who must tame the cravings and desires of your natural animal self so that you may ride, work, and steer your animal self, your body, toward the fulfillment of your true life's purpose. For if you have not tamed and train the animal that you have entered, such an animal will lead you everywhere but where you need to be. This is the beginning of hip hop spiritual training. Subdue the animal that you have entered first so that you may travel through life in peace. Still, some people spend their entire lives taming and training their animal selves, never becoming fully human. Hip hoppers don't have time for this. True hip hoppers are advised to subdue their animal instincts and get to their spiritual work quickly. Be all of yourself. For when you are all of yourself, there is no, there is no more need to subdue or train any aspect of yourself. When you are your whole self, other aspects of your animal self will automatically fall in line with the truth of your being. Be one with yourself. And that's the that's another um way, you know, of, of getting past temptation, being the whole of yourself, being the whole of yourself. There's no fight then. It's just a balancing act uh, uh, at, at, that, in, at that point. When you, when you are your whole self, other aspects of your animal self will automatically fall in line with the truth of your being. Be one with yourself. The real, uh, I'm sorry, you are real and you are eternal. Death, as in the end, is an illusion. Sickness, as in deterioration, is an illusion. Poverty, as in lacking, is an illusion. All that the universe is, you are. All that the universe has, you have. All that the universe does, you are doing. Go with the flow. And that's real. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and highlight that. Let's highlight paragraph 13. And, 
and actually actually this is an affirmation i'm writing next to my highlight affirmation if you want to do that go right ahead but that's what that's what this is an affirmation you can say this to yourself at any time look at it you are real that's it and notice how the big word on real you can even change that to say i am real you are real and, and, and let me say the reason you say you're real is because what's real cannot be destroyed anything real is not you cannot destroy real only something fragmented or because of something else or this kind of thing, uh, contingent upon, those things can be taken away quickly. They're not the cause. They're not real. What is real, real, can never be taken away, can never be destroyed. It, it, it could change into something else, but it, the essence of it will never go away. You are real. And you are eternal. Death, as in the end, is an illusion. This is this is this is the affirmation. Death, as in the end, is an illusion. Sickness, as in deterioration, is an illusion. Poverty, as in lacking, is an illusion. All that the universe is, you are. All that the universe has, you have. All that the universe does, you are doing. Go with the flow. That sounds like a rhyme. That's, I'm gonna put some music to that. Death, as in, in death, death, as in the end, is an illusion. Sickness as in deterioration is an illusion. Poverty as in lacking is an illusion. All the universe, <laughs> all that the universe is, you are. I gotta switch that up somehow, but that that is a you could you could see the so sink. The I am, because I am. I I am all real. That the, all that the universe is, I am. All that the universe has, I have. Mm. All that the universe does. I'm I do it. I'm doing. Go with the flow. Word. That, that's the. That's the realness. Good moment. That's the. That's that's a that's a powerful affirmation right there because it's all true. And 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 when you move your mind to that level where death is an illusion, poverty is an illusion. Come on, sickness is an illusion. And I'm not saying you're not. You're not in poverty or you won't become sick or that you won't die or someone else near you won't die. But it's an illusion. Look past this. Look past this. Nature only changes. It doesn't destroy. No, it's always it's further creation. Further, it's funny how scientists talk about evolution all the time, but, but not about immortality. Because that's what evolution is, immortality. That's that's what immortality is, further evolution. Know this, spiritual awareness is not about you doing anything. It's about you being in harmony with what is already going on. Life and death are already with you now. When you close your eyes, you don't see only blackness. You see your ideas. So when you no longer have physical eyes in death, you are left with your own thoughts to see. That's the hell or the heaven right there. When you no longer have these physical senses to block you from your own thinking and all that hate and, and, and deceiving or whatever it was that you couldn't get out of your being, you now have to live with that on the other side because you're all thought now. You're all consciousness now. It's better to live a life of love Live a life of forgiveness. Live a life of mercy. Live a life of understanding. Try, try at least, you know, to live this kind of, of life. Because if you pass, you know, at any moment, you're going to be left with your own thinking, your own thoughts, your own guilt, your own insecurities, your own fears. You're going to be left with this. Is there any joy in your life? Any achievements in your life? Any challenges that you overcame? You're going to be left with these too. And this is important. This is life and death. This is what we're talking about. You know, we talk about culture. You know, with this, I, I don't see anything more important to discuss than life and death when you're discussing culture. And, and when you really look at it, really, that these are illusions. Life and death are both illusions. It's your being that's adding meaning and, and, and reality to both of these concepts. You are what matters. You are what matters. The way you see things, 
the way you perceive what's going on, this is what matters. For what is truly man-made when human beings are products of the conscious universe itself? You know, for, for what idea is originally human when it is the great spirit alone who thinks, creates, inspires, and acts? Consider the idea that we are only doing exactly what nature wants us to do, that it is our own sense of I, me, <clears throat> uh, and my, on an unconscious level that has us believing that we are doing something separate from nature itself. This is moving into another, another part of this lesson now. For it is only the unaware mind that thinks it is separate from the universe, separate from nature, separate from eternal mind. And in thinking so, it limits its own authority and capabilities for health, love, awareness, and wealth in the physical world. Separate selfhood is an illusion. And this is why so many people are lonely and or insecure. For the only way to truly prove that you are, are separate from nature is to use your limited intellectual perception of reality to create something contrary to what nature is all about. And so in the name of an undeveloped I, me, and my, unaware human beings have used their limited perception of reality to contradict and challenge nature by creating the illusion of sickness, hate, ignorance, poverty for themselves. It is like saying for the sake of maintaining the illusion of being separate from nature, look, mother nature, I will perceive and accept suffering for myself because it is the only thing that you are actually incapable of. This is the, the childish way that humanity is acting. It wants to be so away from nature that it's destroying itself to be that way because you're not separate from nature. And so we suffer in our own attempt to perceive ourselves as separate from nature, uh, separate from the universe, nature, and eternal mind. Many people have traded the truth of an eternal, many people have traded the truth of an infinite creation for the illusion of a final destruction. Such a mindset is the equivalent of children who wish to have their own identity and make it on their own. So they rebel against their parents and cut themselves off from what is rightfully theirs, only to struggle throughout life, ignorant to the fact that they are heirs to all that their parents have, being only smaller versions and or continuations of their parents in reality. Wake up, hip hopper. You are a sleeping god. Not, not a sleeping God, lowercase g-o-d, but in fact, God asleep, capital G, lowercase o-d. An unaware God, you are like a spirit seed planted in this worldly reality awaiting your time to sprout. That's what That was the first part of this lesson. The hip hopper is God asleep, while God is the attuned hip hopper awake. Did you hear that? Let's say it again. The hip hopper is God asleep. That's the, the regular average hip hoppers is God asleep. While God is an attuned hip hopper awake. And notice the spelling on the God your divine self, your higher being. This is what's awake. This is what the this is the God in you. Awake to these realities. You're never gonna die. You're only going to experience different things. And if you're afraid of the experience, then you stagnate yourself, limit your ability to grow. You don't learn nothing. You don't challenge life. You don't become anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, realize this. You might not think of it off the top of your head, but realize that most people don't do anything with their lives because they're afraid to die. Simple, like sim simple to play, like, like, you know, you don't think you say, I ain't afraid to die. Come on, I, why? You know, but when you really it, it, there's a there's a psychology, there's a psychological test that, that, that says that, that says that, that proves this, that, that says when when you really, really, really come down to it, to fear and stagnation, when you really come down to what is the what is it? I'm scared I'm gonna die. That's what it is. That's what it is. Why are you running to pay these bills? Because then I won't have a house. And if I don't have a house, I'll be in the street. 
And if I'm not in the street, I'm gonna I won't eat. And I'll be in the street, I'm gonna die. What well, why are you putting up with this boss with this disrespect? Because I need this money. Why? Because I got bills, because I gotta pay. Because if I don't pay, I die. It's like if you really thought about it and said, you know, I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. You're like, once you throw your hands up, like, you know what? I don't care. You're free. And this is what I learned when I was homeless. I was too young and stupid to articulate it like this. But back then at 16, I threw my hands up. I ain't going to school. I'm not getting a job. This family, I'm out of here. I'm out. I, this is what, this is all I see right now. Is me as the greatest rapper, philosopher. That's it. I left home on that. Straight up. Straight up. Left home on that. Suffered in the street. It was cold. I was hungry. It was crazy. But it happened for me. But it happened. And this is the point. You know, this is this is this is the point. Um this is this is this is the this is the whole point to this part about creation. I didn't want to go back, but this is this is the whole point. The hip hopper is God asleep while God is the attuned hip hopper awake. The hip hopper is an unaware God while God is a fully aware attuned hip hopper. Let's go deeper. This is this is the point right here. I'll get back to this other point. Human beings are said to have five senses. Now get this. Seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, and tasting with a sixth sense that is called human intuition. You know, that's your sixth sense, they call it. It's human intuition or the ability to perceive without the use of the other five senses or rational thought. Now, just stop here for a minute. And people don't get this. Human intuition is real. <laughs> let, me, let me just stop for a minute. Just stop for a minute, okay? As real as smelling, touch, taste, sight, and hearing is. Your ability to sense beyond these senses is real. It can be measured. It can be done over and over again. It happens throughout humanity. We're living with supernatural abilities, but because somebody doesn't come on a TV or some authority doesn't tell you to work on this, we just don't. And this is why this is here. This is, this is for those that put their faith in science. I don't put my faith in science, but I respect science. I definitely respect science. And whenever science coincides with the spiritual, I do quote science, but I don't rely on science. No, I don't. I respect science. Science actually to be able to measure something, weigh something, hold something, that that's that's important. Okay. It's not all mystical and spiritual sometimes, not always all about the mind. Sometimes you want to touch something and weigh something and have an experiment where something happens over and over again. You want consistency on something. That's science. We want to prove something. We want evidence for something. That's science. And science is to be respected on that level. But I don't put my faith in science. I put my faith in God and in my ancestors. That's what worked for me. That's what worked for me. Um, and so and, and so this is what we teach. And we teach it in a sense because the ancestors already told us that they are here and preparing the next generation for light, for a better. Look, look at it right now. We're in 2022. That's a master number. 2022, that's a master number. And you can't deny that if you're into that, if you're into numerology, astrology even, uh, this is a magnificent year we're getting ready to go into. And it always would happen right at the worst year, the worst possible year you could possibly have had to happen. And now the bright sunshine, now the bright sunshine. And if you're asleep to these things, they pass right by you. You don't get nothing. You don't know nothing. You know, you, you just, you just, you know, you just, you're just oblivious, you know, and, and it's a shame, which is why we give this service because, you know, everybody's not going to get it. Everybody don't get this service. So I understand that. But at least half the people 
that are listening to us, you really get it. You understand what it is that I'm saying. You can verify what I'm saying in other books, other lectures, even in your own soul. You say, yeah, I understand what this is. And, and I'm allowing my mind to be guided on this Sunday to these kinds of thoughts, uh, uh, this kind of thing, especially if you hear every Sunday, come on, you're a divine being. Don't, don't front on yourself. You know, the people around you might not be saying it, or they may say, oh, you think you're big, you know, you think you're too much of yourself, or, oh, you think you God, or, you know, you should say, yeah, says, yeah, I'm sorry if that hurts you, or, you know, so on, you know, I, I'm not the sovereign mind of the universe, but it is me. <laughs> so I don't know what trip you on, but if, if God made me, I am God then. You know, if I come from my mother, I'm my mother, right? If I come from my father, I'm my father, right? But if I come from God, I'm God, right? And that's where we stop because of this colonial education, this matrix on our head. You can't say you God. You can't say you divine. You can't say that you're a spiritual being. Oh, there's something wrong with that, isn't it? Well, guess who's saying it's wrong? The devil. Well, who are you going to believe? And so here we go. Here we go. Let's go deeper. Okay. And I stopped here on human intuition because human intuition is real. <laughs> you know, we, we tend to put these things aside and say, oh, it ain't real. You know, that's, that's you know, it's it's uh, it's not real. It's like what they do with, with Wonder Woman. I really, Every week I got to talk about Wonder Woman. But like they really did a number on... Um, uh positive thinking uh they really did a number on the villain in the movie that's why it's, it's mind-blowing to me how the villain in the movie of wonder woman is a positive thinker <laughs> i just i just can't i, I don't know I, I let me get off that real quick i just but human intuition is real that's my point that's my point don't breeze over that Smell, touch, taste, sight, hearing. Yeah, those are real. But human intuition is just as real. However, human beings possess even more senses than these, these six. In fact, balance is a sense that is very seldom mentioned among the human senses. Actually, balance can be called a sixth sense while human intuition can be called a seventh sense. But for the sake of mass understanding, we shall not include balance as a sixth sense, although hip hoppers do acknowledge that they possess more than five or six senses. We know we possess more than five or six senses. As a matter of fact, uh, the author scientist, a guy named Brian Green, um, wrote a book called The Elegant Universe. I think uh, some of his books, we mentioned him last week. Um, talks about us having 17 senses, up to 17 different senses. Like, imagine that. You know, and balance is a sense. Hunger is a sense. You know, like, you dig into yourself, you'll find you have more than just touch, taste, sight, and hearing, uh, seeing. You know, this is, this is how they lock your brain down. They lock your brain down to just, you have... Touch, taste, sight, hearing, smelling. You know, this, that's it. So you live your life only through what you can smell, see, touch, taste, hear. You know, that's how you live your life. But if you really look at the reality of it, you also have an intuition. You have a sense of balance. You have a sense of hunger. You know, you have other senses too. Like, I mean, I don't got to get into all of them, but you have a sense of beauty. You have a sense of humor. These are senses. Like animals don't laugh. Monkeys do, or at least we think they do. <laughs> they look like they are. Uh, but humans are, are unique in this sense. We have certain senses that we play up. You know, human beings cry. And, and not many animals cry. They moan. They do get depressed. But they don't cry with tears. Humans are one of the one of the few um, living creep living beings that cry with tears and laugh. Ha 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 ha! Laugh. 
You don't hear that in the animal world. You don't see this uh, in the, in the animal world. Animals laughing out loud. <laughs> but then again, we don't even know what they're saying, <laughs> so we can't even say that they're not laughing or not crying. But the way in which we're doing it, we don't see that mimicked anywhere else with other animals. Now, we should do some research on the tears because there got to be another animal that when, when it cries, it sheds tears. But I'm not sure. Uh, there, might, there might not be. Um, I'm going off into something else. But anyway... Uh, it just made me think about that. That human beings, yeah, we're one of the few animals that shed tears when 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 we cry. Uh, and and this is this is I'm talking about senses, your sense, broaden broaden your senses, broaden. When you broaden your senses, you also broaden your being. You broaden what your being can sense in this dimension. If you only think you got five senses, then you limit your being to seeing the world in those five ways. But if you have a sixth sense, just imagine just one more sense and look how much more advanced you are uh, in, in comparison to those who are only working with five cents and don't believe in intuition. Don't don't believe in, um, you know, any of that dreams and all of that's the dream interpretation. You say, ah, I don't believe in all that. They only working with five senses and you got this six. Imagine if you had a seven and an eight and a nine. This is what the gods are like, not some lofty name, you sitting up in the sky dreaming about yourself, but a human being that's beyond what human beings are, are capable of doing. That's a god, a superhuman being. You know, we went over this a couple of months ago. What is what is a god? Not what is God almighty, not the sovereign mind of the universe, not that, but what does it mean to be a god, to be godlike? What does that mean? We we shirk away from that because people are not. Oh no, that's not me. We, we, we were taught not to not to look at ourselves like this. When that's all we are, are gods. All that's all we are. And when you're not recognizing that, when you're not recognizing that, you're not fulfilling your purpose. No matter what you do, you're not fulfilling your purpose. And let me also say this on on, on that: everyone is not a god. Let me say that. As I always mention, God is a bloodline. God is a character. You, you, When you are drawn to the things of the gods, then you know you are a god. You spend your money on divinity, spend your money, spend your time. You're constantly looking for knowledge. You constantly got, you're a god. There's no way around it. You, you can't be always in a hardware store looking for nails and hammer and not be a, a handyman or a woman or a carpenter. You can't constantly produce chair and table. And somebody say, you a carpenter? You say, no, I'm not. I'm just doing a chair and a table. You know, no, dude, what you do, what you are drawn toward, what you are, uh, uh, what you put your time on defines you, defines you and, and, and defines who you are. So here you are on a Sunday with KRS-One and hip hop behind me and you're taking this in and you're here every week. Most of you are here every week to hear this. Don't let the people around you convince you that you're anything less than divine. Don't let the pictures of people with white halos on their head or winged angels and cherubs coming down. This is stupid. This is illusion. Get to what a real God is. A real God, real God, love. What, do I have to run it down? Peace, love, unity, safely having fun. That's the gods right there. Uh, health, love, awareness, and well. The gods right there. Come on. Uh, patience, charity, understanding, forgiveness, mercy. Come on, do I have to keep... These are th if this is part of your personality, don't front on your own divinity. That's the point. That, that's the point to this little piece right here. So these are your other senses. These are the other senses. Real quick on the tears. Um, according to National Geographic, all vertebrates, even reptiles and birds, have tears, but it's 
for them it's critical for maintaining healthy eyesight. Humans are the only ones who emotionally tear. Humans are the only ones that emotion on earth, in earth. We the only ones that shed tears emotionally. Other animals, mammals, we say vertebrae. All vertebrates, even reptiles and birds. All shed tears, but not to not emotionally. And who's to know what their emotions are? Who tested a bird's emotion? I I, I think well, they observe them and try <laughs> to <laughs> try to interpret. Try to interpret. So technically. The tears are real in other vertebrae, and vertebrae meaning animals with spines, I guess. Um, uh, for them, they're not being emotional when they shed their tears. It's only for like cleaning their for eyes. cleaning their eyes. But when we shed, it's emotional. I question that. Although you did clear it up, the way but let's let's clarify that. According to National Geographic, say it again one more time. All vertebrates, even reptiles and birds, have tears, which are critical for maintaining healthy eyesight. Okay, so that's National Geographic. That's the scientific approach. And only humans are the ones who shed tears emotionally. Yes, sir. Now, of course, I'm not going to dwell on that. Uh, but you could see uh, what I was pointing to was not only the uniqueness of what does it mean to be human, Wow, it might mean shedding tears emotionally. <laughs> Says nobody else is doing that. Uh, you know, next time you cry, say, I'm being human right now. I'm being authentically human right now because I mean, according to National Geographic, nobody else is crying. Now, um, I find that a little hard to believe I, just because, I don't know. Emotion is a, is an interesting thing because, look, the birds could be looking at the the the, the the beauty of the landscape and so moved by it, they just start tearing up. They don't have to be hurt by something or overly joyed in that way. They just, just looking at it uh, moves them emotionally to tears. I don't know, I'm, I'm theorizing like they are, uh, but I would not put past the emotion of other living beings. That sounds very colonial to me. Um, we're the only ones with emotion. Other animals are just, their tears are just to wipe away the, their eyes. Like a chicken in, in, on, at a Kentucky Fried Chicken factory is not actually shedding real tears, you know? Like, like you know, and that's that colonial kind of shit. They ain't really in pain. Only our pain is real, you know, that, that kind of thing. So I put that disclaimer on it. But although according to the science, uh, just to just, uh, thank you for that, because according to the science, then human beings are the only ones that tear up. Um, to be authentically human means you have to cry <laughs> on another level. So um, I'm moving on, reading reading forward. Um, for there is, uh, 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 yeah, I finished that. Um, well, you know what, let me, let me make sure because I, I did talk for a minute. Uh, 23, oh, I'm reading 23 again, going further down. Actually, balance can be called a sixth sense while human intuition can be called the seventh sense. But for the sake of mass understanding, we shall not include balance as a sixth sense, although hip hoppers do acknowledge that they possess more than five or six senses. For there is a seventh sense, technically an eighth sense, that is even beyond balance and intuitive perception. Know this, to perceive is to become aware through the senses. That's what it means to perceive to become aware through your senses. Even through the sixth sense or intuitive perception, it is to apply one's senses to material objects in order to understand and operate them. This is, what, this is all the means of perception, to perceive something. However, the seventh sense is the awareness of oneness and wholeness. Now get this, it is to sense the oneness and interconnectedness of life itself. It is a knowing a being. It is a knowing and a being. Um, it, this should have probably, uh, said itself. it is a knowing a being. That could have been a semicolon, but I'm gonna let that ride. Uh, after knowing it could have been a semicolon. 
um, but let that ride. Technically, there is nothing to preserve, nothing to perceive or sense because nothing is separate from oneself. This is the, another sense. This is why it's called the seventh sense because we dealt with a sixth sense, which is your uh, intuitive uh, uh, abilities, your your um, uh, uh, human intuition. The seventh sense is beyond this. The seventh sense is oneness. This is not a perception through a sense organ. This is oneness. Let me explain it even further. Technically, there is nothing to perceive or sense because nothing is separate from oneself. In fact, there is no self separate from the, from the conscious universe. There's no self. There's no separate self. I am the universe and the universe is me. There is no you and them, yours and theirs, this and that. So there is nothing to sense or perceive or try to understand. Here, you can only be. There is nothing you do not know, nothing you do not have, and nowhere that you are not. In the seventh sense, all existence is one. And your particular identity or sense of self is simply the conscious gathering of the universe into your particular time and space. That's me right now. I and the universe are one. I've realized my whole body is made from star stuff. I don't just come from the earth. And where's the earth? The earth is in the universe. I and the universe are one. Okay, I realize that I, I am only doing what the universe is doing. That is it. Okay, in the seventh sense, all existence is one, and your particular identity as KRS one or sense of self, me, my, I, is simply the conscious gathering. You are consciously gathering the universe into your particular time and space. Here we realize that whenever we think or perceive that we are this or that, we limit our access to the entire conscious universe, or we, we limit our access to the entire conscious universe to our individual identity. And it is this type of an awareness that gives us our sense of order, independence, security, I, me, my, etc. You're bringing the whole universe down to you right here. It's like having a cell phone. And I ask people all the time, why wow, you got you in the palm of your hand, you got you could call anywhere, anybody, you can look up anything. All knowledge is in the palm of your hand. And what do you do with it? Well, you know, Margie said the other day that she was gonna get a pair of shoes. And I don't know if I like the shoes that she get. Last week I had the same pair of shoes. You are holding in your hand the most advanced technology known to humanity at this moment, okay? In the palm of your hand. And what do we get on and do? Man, fuck him, man. I don't like this motherfucker. Man, did you, I'm going to go get the... What, what, what? Gossiping, scandaling, stupid talk. This is the same thing we do with our being. You are connected to the conscious universe itself. And what are you doing? Worrying, fearing, feeling sad, feeling depressed, feeling unfulfilled, feeling like you're not much. <laughs> and you're, you're the, this one finger, this one finger right here, this finger, the, the technology that goes into this one finger, I got 10 of them. But just, just, just focus on this one. The technology that goes into this one finger, okay, the intelligence that goes into this one finger dwarfs this entire computer and the entire internet globally. The internet is, there is no computer on earth that has matched the human mind or the human body. None. They're trying, no doubt. But ain't nobody there. Ain't nobody there. 
This is God's technology. Look how fluid it is. Look how advanced this technology is, okay? This is what we sitting here going, well, you know, um, I need something more than this. <laughs> um, I, need, uh, I need something more than the most advanced technology. You housed in the most advanced technology already, but you're ungrateful for it. If you was grateful for the body you had, you have, you take better care of it, first of all, but you would also find your importance in it. I'm good in my own skin, as they say. You know, I'm good in my own skin. You know, are you good in your own skin, in your own body? Do you cherish your body, your temple, your vehicle? Do you really cherish it? I mean, because think about it, just your eyes alone the eye alone, the technology of an eye. <laughs> I mean, and then you have DNA running all through you. Don't nobody know what DNA is. <laughs> they could decode it. They could read it. They don't know what it is. <laughs> they don't know what that is, okay? You have this flowing all through you. And instead of looking within yourself and trying to figure out what DNA is, trying to figure out what your penal gland is there for, trying to figure out what the frontal lobe is about, trying to figure out how can I see? What, what is sight? Trying to, instead of trying to figure that out, we got our mind focused on that mortgage, mind focused on the car note, mind focused on the kids and whatever else is going on and how well I'm doing at the job. This got our whole mind, the mind, the mind that if used properly can set you up in a life where you don't even need a job. The mind can put you in a place where you can rap for a living. You didn't hear that. <laughs> I'll just continue reading. So, so. However, the seventh sense is the awareness of oneness and wholeness. Uh, oh, no, here, here it is. Here, here it is. Here it is. I just want to read this last part. 25, I want to get to the end of 25 one more time. There is nothing you do not know, nothing you do not have, and nowhere that you are not. I'll put this in a rhyme uh, in, a self, in a step into a world. I said, I'm everywhere and nowhere at once. I know some people... Uh, so, uh, so, some for people front. It's the God of rap. You heard of it. That part, I am everywhere and nowhere at once. I threw that in real quick. It matches this line right here. There is nothing that you do not know, nothing that you do not have, and nowhere that you are not when you're in the oneness. In the seventh sense, all existence is one, and your particular identity or sense of self is simply the conscious gathering of the universe into your particular time and space. Here, we realize that when, whenever we think or perceive that we are this or that, we limit our, our access to the entire conscious universe to our individual identities. And it is this type of, a, of an awareness that gives us our sense of order, independence, security, I, me, my, etc. However, the seventh sense is to feel the truth of the great of the one great unified con conscious event as oneself. Let me read that again. The seventh sense is to feel the truth of the one great unified conscious event as oneself. It is to return to one's non-physical essence while still physically aware. It is to wake up to the reality of the conscious chaotic universe while voluntarily dreaming the ordered material world. Most people do it at their time of death, awakening, but some through meditation and or some tra tra dramatic uh, life event actually wake up to the oneness of the conscious universe while still dreaming the perceived reality of physical life. What a revelation. Consider the idea that this life as we know it is simply the dream of our true existence as beings of light, consciousness, for it is light consciousness that we are, and it is more light consciousness that we shall become. At the time of our physical deaths, we shall uh, we simply wake up. For this physical life is only a temporary rest 
for our real existence as beings of conscious light. Consider this. Conscious awareness uses an enormous amount of energy, even in the physical world. This is why those who think often also sleep often. Just by being conscious, we wear our bodies out. Likewise, as beings of light consciousness, we use an enormous amount of energy in the universe just to remain conscious. Therefore, as non-physical beings of the conscious universe, we rest from our true existence as light, only to dream the life we are living now. The physical world is the dream or idea, excuse me, of the physical realm, of, of the spiritual realm and spiritual beings. And by the way, this is an old uh, philosophy. This is not original to, um, to, to our, our teachings. This is, again, something else that I'm adding in uh, because it's old mystical thinking that hip hop is need to know. Um, that there's an idea that the life that we're living now is a dream and that we are, we are asleep in our true state. Uh, and this life is the dream. It's something to consider. You don't put your whole life on that. You don't define your life by these analogies, but the meaning of the analogy is what you really want. To see this life as a dream is helpful. It's helpful to get through it uh, uh, in, in that way. And if you can position your mind to really see life as a dream, then you, you'll be able to manipulate the dream as you're dreaming it. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just continue. Hold, hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, just let me add real quick that I would say that um, I believe that came from psychics who dream their future. Mm. That that's, and that's why they say it's a dream because they're having the experience of dreaming <coughs> their actual future, and then they wake up in the, essentially enacting their seventh sense. Um, but I, I wanted to go back and suggest the highlighting of twenty eight. Uh, and the end of 24, because those are both explanations. 24, let's go back to 24 real quick and take a look at it. For there is a seventh sense, technically an eighth sense, that is even beyond balance and intuitive perception. Know this, to perceive is to become aware through the senses, even though the sixth sense or intuitive, even through the sixth sense or intuitive perception. It is to apply one's senses to material objects in order to understand and operate them. However, the seventh sense is the awareness of oneness and wholeness. It is to sense the oneness and interconnectedness of life itself. It is a knowing, a being. And see that end piece? Now, if you're going to highlight that, then I'm going to go ahead and say, put the semicolon in. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the semicolon in. So let's just put there... Make knowing, uh, put error next to knowing, where it says it is a knowing, a being. Grammatically, that could have been or should be a semicolon. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, just make that what that is. But let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and get 24. You're right about that. And and 24, I did linger around there. Um most of the no this is right. uh I, I usually highlight the no this is but I but I, I said you know let me let me just go past this because again this is a very a very deep um overstanding uh if you haven't lived this life yet if you haven't experienced the death in your family or if you haven't experienced death yourself because there's that's there's spirits listening to us right now they're saying yo uh, or in that sense, but if you haven't experienced death, or if you haven't experienced a death in the family, then this, this, this is, you know, it, it, it can help, but you have to have lived a little bit uh, to, to really get the gist of this. But from an intellectual point of view, just from a point of view of understanding what's being said, yes, 20, well, 24 my, my is helpful. was where the, the, or just the seventh sense, I was just going for the end of it. Or somebody says, or they look at the gospel, right? They see you have the seventh overstanding, the seventh sense. So they say, Well, what is the seventh sense? That explains it right there, right? Uh, no, but I go ahead and get the whole thing because it says, For there is a seventh sense, <laughs> technically, an eighth sense. 
that is beyond balance and intuitive. No, you, you, you're it's, it's explaining the whole the whole thing. So, so no, we got it. Twenty four. Now you also mentioned twenty eight. Let's look at that. However, the seventh sense is to feel the truth of the one great unified conscious event as once again another explanation of the seventh sense. Uh, it is to return to one's non physical essence while still physically aware. It is to wake up to the reality of the conscious chaotic universe while voluntarily dreaming the ordered material world. I didn't explain the techniques to that, so I kind of left it alone. What do you see? Uh, just, again, the seventh sense is to feel the truth of the one great unified conscious event. or It, it would follow if or if somebody had this memorized to be able to say the seven senses, the awareness of oneness and wholeness it is to sense the oneness and interconnectedness of life itself. It is the knowing of being. The seven senses to feel the truth of the one great unified conscious event, or like as a continued uh -huh. um, explanation, it is to return to one's non physical essence while still physically aware. It is to wake up to the reality of conscious chaotic universe while voluntarily dreaming the ordered material world. And then they would have to explain, obviously. Right, right. The, the instructor would then um, see if you bring highlight to that, because that's interesting for those who will teach this later. That's that's um, that's interesting. So then, you know what we we will do? Let us let's let's do some underlining then. Let's do some underlining. After 24, um, after 24, underline the last of 20, the last part, the last sentence of 25. There is nothing you don't know, nothing you don't have, and nowhere that you are not. Just underline the, that sentence. Then bring it over to... Yeah, bring it over to 26. Let me highlight then the whole of 26. Go ahead and highlight the whole of 26. In the seventh sense, all existence is one. And your particular identity or sense of self is simply the conscious gathering of the universe into your particular time and space. That's interesting with now... Um, wait, where was the other part? You said 28 was... Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then go ahead and highlight 28. That's a full explanation. Uh there's more to it, but there's a there's a that's a that's a full that's on the seventh sense for those that are to teach it. And for those that just would want a, a further explanation, but the, I like the teaching of that. Um it gets right to the point. And that's why we highlight as well for those, you know, that maybe just joining us or so on. That is the purpose for the highlight. It's not just for your personal use. It's for the scholars that are to teach the, the gospel of hip hop. They, they These are the, the salient pieces that kind of explain the rest of the gospel or the piece in which you are uh, uh, dealing with. And as a matter of fact, now that I, uh, I will read this with teachers in mind, I was reading it more personally. Uh, in, in, in that sense, but let's add that too. Let's add the teachers uh, in there as well. Okay, uh, continuing on then. Continuing on. Um, let me catch you from... Uh, wow, that's interesting. I'm going to catch you from the end. Um, yeah, this is it. Let me start from 32. Uh, let me start from 32. I'm going to pick up at 32 and, and keep it moving. Here we go. Likewise, as beings of light, consciousness. All right, consciousness. We use an enormous amount of energy in the universe just to remain conscious. Therefore, as non physical wait, and now that I'm here, know that as well. If you woke up, had a full night's sleep, 
woke up, got in a chair, and just read a book, you would fall back to sleep. Consciousness eats up almost all of the energy of the human body. Imagine that. Consciousness is what makes you tired, not whether your body's been moved or not. And let me say it again. I just have to hit you with this again because this is this is freeing your mind from just experiencing the body. This is scientific. Those who put their faith in that, scientific fact. This can be measured. This can be weighed. This can be repeated. Consciousness eats up most of the energy of your body. Consciousness. Just being awake is burning energy. Imagine that. It's not the physical body that gets tired. It's the mind. So think about the next time you're tired. Are you tired? Is the body tired? Or are you tired? And when you really think about it, a lot of times you go like, no, I'm tired. <laughs> I want to go relax. But you know, if when you went to your bed and you just sat down and you smelled smoke, and then all of a sudden the alarm went off and your door blew open and it was a bomb, some fire, you would all of a sudden have the energy to get up out of there. You could have worked 16 hour a day. All of a sudden, your body, leg, arm, move, suddenly got energy. You be out that building. So what is tiredness? And I just want to just, just real quick on that because that that that's like right there. It's like it's like right there. You know, just think about that. It's your mind that gets tired, not necessarily the body. And that's how some people can work for four hours and get tired. Some people can work for eight hours and get tired. Some people can work for 16 hours, never get tired. See, like these people never go to sleep. Why? Because their mind's not sleepy. That's an interesting point. But just know that. That it's, the, it's consciousness that eats up a lot of your energy. And I think there's a corresponding uh, measurement with the brain. The brain eating up all the sugar in the body. The brain eating up all the oxygen. Most of your oxygen goes to the brain. You know, this kind of thing. So it's like, you know, thought, brain, mental, all of that's eating up the energy. All of that's eating up the energy. Think about that. Physical world dream, okay. Uh, uh, and again, that's, that's the last. Therefore, as non-physical beings in the conscious universe, we rest from our true existence as light, only to dream the life we are living now. The physical world is the dream or idea of the spiritual realm or spiritual beings. The longer we live, dream, in this physical world, the more rest we are getting as beings of light in the conscious universe. This is an old school thought too, by the way. And when we have fully rested, lived, in the physical world, we simply wake up, die. However, while resting, some beings of light experience nightmares meaning this life from them. Nightmares, traumatic life experiences, such as physical injury, worry, sickness, hate, ignorance, poverty, etc., which cause them to be awakened from their sleep, die, before they are fully rested as spiritual as spirit beings. Such people at their physical deaths awaken to their true selves as beings of conscious light, only to find themselves still tired or unfulfilled. Such people, beings, for lack of energy, fulfillment, fall back to sleep, returning to the dream of physical life, repeating the process again until they are fully rested. However, those people, beings that do get a full life's rest, awaken at the time of their physical death, fully rested. Such, such people, beings, acquire the energy needed to stay awake as beings of light, they do not have to rest again for a long, long time. They do not need to sleep again, having dreams of physical life with its traumatic and stressful experiences. As fully rested beings of conscious light, they live in the peace of eternal mind. If you notice, when you are sleeping, your dream world is just as real as the physical world you are resting from. 
In your dream world, you have friends, relatives, memories, <laughs> okay, material goods, concerns, responsibilities that are all very real and very important to you while you are asleep. However, when you awaken from your sleeping, you care nothing for the people, places, things, and events of your dream world, especially if your dream life was a nightmare. While you are dreaming, nothing except the happening, the happenings of your dream world is important to you until you wake up. In fact, when you are asleep in the physical world, you literally look dead. Right, when you sleep, when people come over and look at you, you look dead. There's no difference between death and sleep. <laughs> there we go. And, and all of the analogies, you know, sleep in the mind, dead in the mind. While you are dreaming, nothing except the happenings of your dream world is important to you until you wake up. In fact, when you are asleep in the physical world, you literally look dead. It is only the automatic physical functions of the body that continue to operate when you are asleep. However, conscious awareness, you, is gone. And without you, conscious awareness, the body is semi-lifeless, even fully lifeless. For death, just like your dreams, is so real, so relaxing, so important, such an escape to you. That when you die, you care nothing for the happenings and relationships of the physical world that you have left behind unless you choose to. For the consciousness that you suddenly remember at your so-called time of death is the truth of your being. And in that truth is a peace that is simply unattainable in the illusion of, of physical life. In death, you escape the illusions of physical life. You are in truth. You may even wish that all of your relatives and friends were dead so that they may experience the peace and joy that you have attained by escaping the nightmares of physical life. However, the reality is that in death, you wake up and care little for the, for the world that you have left behind, just as when you awaken from sleep, caring little for the people, places, things, and events that you have left behind in your dream world, unless you choose to. So it is at the time of your... That you choose to, so it is at the time of your physical death. The only thing you take with you, the only thing of any true value from one dream world to the next is the love, respect, and ultimate lesson you have acquired while dreaming. Consider this. Your physical existence is simply the dream of your non-physical existence at rest. And likewise, your non-physical existence is simply the dream of your physical existence at rest. But oh, what a joy when... When you actually wake up in your physical dream, such an experience is indeed the essence of your spiritual empowerment. What an empowerment. What a great revelation it is when one becomes conscious to one's true self as a being of conscious light while still dreaming the physical world. To realize that once, to realize that everyone in your conscious awareness, including your environment, is part of your self-induced dream state is the beginning of spiritual awareness. This is the beginning right here, and, and just the beginning. In fact, your, your physical body is the vehicle that is carrying you through your dream, a dream created by your mind. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't let that go by. A dream created by your mind. And imagine we're all doing it. Right now, I'm dreaming about these dudes behind me. But likewise, they dream it about me and the, the, whoever's next to them. This makes you feel like, look at the universe. Look at the fabric of, of the reality in which we live. We're all dreaming, but we're all dreaming each other into each other's dreams. Yeah. How do you even think on this level? Okay, this is, it stretches your head out. That's why it's in this in this gospel it's in the gospel of hip-hop because it's a great exercise for expanding your mind you don't judge your life by this you don't govern your life by this this is can you think like this can you stretch your awareness out to this because it's empowering it's empowering 
This is where the magic begins. Right here. A dream created by your mind. This was my 14-year-old self. I'm living it right now. I don't even know if these dudes is real or a part of my dream world. I have no idea. This is crazy because I definitely said to myself, I'm going to be KRS-One and I'm going to be a rapper and I'm going to be ya, ya, ya. And that was all a dream. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. <laughs> then I wound up being in it. Okay, like, right. So what is the dream? And what dream are you creating right now? What dream are you creating right now? If you want to go further, like if this, if, if this is, you know, new, if this knowledge is new to you, then the, the other question would be, what dream is other people creating for you? Woo. They live in a dream out with you in talk. Because you're oblivious. You just, I don't even see it. I, I smell, touch, taste, see, and hear. That's it. That's all I do. I have no other sense. I can't go outside of that. Anything outside of touch, taste, smell, you know, anything outside the five senses, I don't think it's real. And if I don't think it's real, it's not. The mind makes things real. You don't think it's real? It's not. But for those of us that do think it's real, like me, who has evidence on the realness too, here I am. Evident. I put these principles to work. And here we are. Here we are. And not only did I put them to work, thousands of other people fight thousands of years have put these principles to work. So this is why I'm, I'm outlining them here now within the gospel, because if we can put these principles to work, there's nothing that we can't do as a nation. Nothing that we can If we can see ourselves as God, Living in peace, love, unity, and joy amongst each other. Expressing that to the world and demanding of the world that that's how they treat us. What can we not do? Our children need to grow up in that kind of environment. That's what we're working on. Paragraph 45. For when one is spiritually conscious while physically dreaming, all things become possible. <laughs> Awake in the dream. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. Here it is. Uh, for when one is spiritually conscious while physically dreaming, all things become possible. For what in the physical world is impossible to the one whose physical body is asleep. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me say that again. It should be, what is a question? For what in the physical world is impossible to the one whose physical body is asleep, yet whose conscious awareness is awake to the spirit in the physical world. Meaning your physical body is asleep. The cravings, the temptations, the angers, the worries, the fears, the doubts, all of that's asleep. That's, that's done. It's asleep. And you are awake to the fact that you're dreaming all of it. And you can make this into whatever you want it to be. Think about that for a minute. What problems do you have if you are in control of your own reality? You have to get deeper in here and, and, and that controls what's going on out of here. Very interesting. There's no school for KRS-One. There's no school for Tony Crush. There's no school for Sun One. There's no school for, for Ra Haru One. There's no school for a G Simone, for a Zinaru, for a desire, for an am ambitious. There's no school for none of that. You have to decide. I'm Joe Sanchez. That's it. And this is who he's going to be. And this is who he's going to manifest. And this is what it's going to be. And it's not going to be contingent 
upon somebody else's existence. I exist. Now, with that definition, what does that existence do? What does that existence have? What does that existence require? That's it. And stand on that for a good 10 years, and you'll start to see the existence you decided upon will begin to manifest itself in some crazy ways you could not even imagine, because you couldn't. You, you, you couldn't. That, that's why it's a shock. That's why it's called a miracle. That's why it's because you couldn't imagine it. You couldn't imagine it. You did, but you could not have imagined it would have been, you know, what it was. I'm always shocked, shocked in my entire life, but I knew it. I did decide when I was young, this was going to be. But then things had to happen. All types of craziness. I had to meet Scott LaRock. I had to be at the right shelter at the right time to meet the right dude at the right moment. It's like, uh, don't let those moments in your life just go by. They, they, these are the, this is what defines you. This is what is going to define your future right here. And most people just let these moments go right by. They don't see them. They don't acknowledge them. They don't nothing. They just go by and then they wonder. They say, man, God don't answer no prayers. God don't answer my prayers. Yo, because they want to see God with a human intelligence. They, they want to have an animal character, but see the divine. They want to have a human character, but enjoy the gifts of the divine. And it doesn't work that way. To enjoy the gifts of the divine, you got to be divine. You know, those of the reggae world will remember Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown. Only dread will come over. Mm. Naughty dread must come over. Hey, only dread will come over. Dennis Brown talking about the river separating the dread, the man or woman, the conscious person will be the only ones that will be able to step over the river into, into what he calls Zion. Uh, he step over into, into that holy place, into the place of righteousness, what we call hip hopia. Only, only the conscious are going to be able to step over there. Everybody else, I don't know. You're going to have to live whatever you live in. But there's another place called Hip Hopia. And it is, it is, it's in spirit now, but that which as it is in heaven, so it is on earth. That which is above, so it is on below. And it's soon enough, just like I'm talking to you like this, we're going to be broadcasting from our own place, Hip Hopia. And we're going to be, and this, that's why I say it every once in a while, like I'm saying it now. So when it goes down, when it happens, you could know this was the affirmation. This was the visualization. And we're doing it in real time so that you can learn it. You can see what's going on. You can see that what we are reading is true and not true to convince you, oh, yo, what we're reading is true. I don't care less whether you might think whether it's true or not. We're living something. That's the point here. We're living something and receiving the gifts of what we're living. So we're sharing that power with our people. And like I said, there's only a few that's going to get this. There's only a few that's going to get it. We offering a service, okay? And only a few are really going to get it. But that's all it takes. It don't take a whole bunch of people to change this world. It only take one or two. Okay, that's it. It don't take a whole bunch of people to preserve hip hop as well. It only take one or two to really anybody really serious about this can really do this. So there it is. So let's continue on. I'm coming up uh, on 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 the end of our read. Obviously, we're gonna cut and continue the read next week as well. Um, but I want to get these first lessons out the way on the seventh sense. Let's continue. What an empowerment. What a great revelation it is when one becomes conscious to one's true self as a being of conscious light while still dreaming one's physical reality. To, to realize that everyone in your conscious awareness, including your environment, is part of your self-induced dream state. 
is the beginning of spiritual awareness. In fact, your physical body is the vehicle that is carrying you through your dream, a dream created by your mind. For when one is spiritually conscious while physically dreaming, all things become possible. For what in the physical world is impossible to the one whose physical body is asleep, yet whose conscious awareness is awake to the spirit in the physical world? When, for when you reverse your conscious perception to perceive this physical world as the dream world, anything becomes possible. Fear is eliminated because death becomes simply an awakening a transformation, a realization, an exit, as birth becomes simply an entrance. All is creation. Everything is one. The universe is one. And all that proceeds from the universe is one. There is no other material reality. Therefore, there is no death for the being of conscious light that leaves the physical body every night at sleep. You leave your body every night at sleep. You die every night. Okay, it's just that you come back, so everybody's cool with it. <laughs> okay, uh, 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 th therefore, there is no death for the being of conscious light that leaves the physical body every night at sleep. There is only transformation and rejuvenation. Destruction, as in the end of a thing's existence, is actually the illusion of an undeveloped and unaware mind that has not carried the essence of things to their final and ultimate conclusion. For the only thing that is truly impossible in the physical universe is destruction. That is, in, that is the only thing that's impossible in the universe is destruction. For we hold and, and limit the universe to our particular time and space out of fear and or doubt. Like a security blanket, we create and hide ourselves within our physical bodies. And out of fear and ignorance, we use our conscious perception to deny the terrifying presence of the infinite and chaotic, chaotic conscious universe. We are hiding in our dreams. Let me say it again. We are hiding in our dreams. That's what we most people are doing. They're hiding in their dreams. They're not creating their dreams in their life. They, 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 they're hiding behind the job, the, the, the purpose. The, the, they're not really expressing the being that created that job and that purpose. The seventh sense produces a kind of sight that sees the material world as an effect of conscious light, energy, a dream. Everything physical is changing its form before your very eyes. The things of the material world are indeed temporary and illusionary. Now you can underline this first part. The seventh sense produces a kind of sight that sees the material world as an effect of conscious light, energy, a dream. You can go ahead and underline that. Everything is light, 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 light. Everything is light. It's all light. It's all light energy. It's all energy. Everything is energy. And when you realize yourself as energy, when your intention becomes energy, then you can affect the energy of everything else. Right now, you're, 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 you perceive your being as smell, touch, taste, sight, and hearing. So you can only affect that which you can smell, touch, taste, sight. And that's only because of that's how you perceive yourself. That's the only reason. Once you perceive yourself as energy, then you can affect energy, just like you can affect sight, touch, taste, sight, because you perceive yourself through that. Other people perceive themselves having a sixth sense. So they get the sixth sense. They can control what's going on in that arena. Once you perceive that you are energy, you are vibration, then you can control other vibrations and other energies. But first, you have to become that which you're going to control. You have to become that which you're going to see and so on. So, so when you become, and this is, I'm reading this again, in the seventh sense, I'm sorry, the seventh sense produces a kind of sight. You get to see a kind of sight that sees the material world as an effect of conscious light energy, a dream. And this dream is produced by you, by your being. It's not even by your mind. It's your being that's producing the dream. Your, 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 your sense of self, what you believe you are and what you believe you're about is producing the dream around you. And, and when you become, now I tell you really on, on a physical level, I tell you what happens to me every once in a while. Maybe this happens to you. 
I, I see myself as energy. I don't, you know, I love my physical body. It is a beautiful thing. But me personally, no, nah, I'm nowhere near this. I'm way past this, okay? But when I walk down the street, sometimes the lights go on or automatically come on. Sometimes we be walking down the streets, we be pitch black and the light just come on. <laughs> you know, or you home and your lights flicker. And I, I'll, I'll just tell you this because it's aggravating sometimes when, when you turn on your light and it flickers. It flickers. And, you, and you're like, come on, I, I need the light right now. I, I need this light to be steady. But a lot of times, and I ch and, and I know it's me because I changed the bulb and the bulb's still flickering. Brand new bulb. <laughs> you put it, you say, okay, the bulb's going out. Let me change the bulb. Let me get the bulb, put the bulb in, flickering. Flickering. They say, okay, it's the it's the um it's the the module itself. Okay, module itself. So you say, okay, I'm not gonna use this light, I'll just turn it off. Then you go outside, say I'm gonna go to the supermarket. You go to the supermarket, you walk down the light just above you. Flickering in the supermarket. You're like, come on, man. This can't be. Come on, man. You know, just little things like this. It happens. And sometimes it gets aggravating. This is why our ancestors turned off these, these energies, these abilities. They turned them off. Some people, not, not everyone, but some of our ancestors didn't want these abilities because they do get in the way. And I have to say that for those that really practice, you know, they get in the way sometimes with the material world. Some things, you know, just come in here. I tell you, you know, this is these little things. Uh, I was driving cross country. You know, we did this show in California. So I'm driving back cross country. And somehow, you know, something said, something said get off the highway uh, and, and get gas. So I jump off the highway. Some obscure thing. It's, it said, uh, you know, Indian souvenirs. And whatever. we was way out, you know, Midwest somewhere. Jump off of the highway. We get there. They don't have the right fuel. The place was whack. It was, we said, you know what? We just going to keep going. Get back on the highway. Now I'm on a different road. I'm like, how do I get on this road? First of all, I'm an excellent driver. I'm not getting lost, okay? We knew he was on 10 West, and we going 10 West. How do I get on this Suddenly, I'm on some other road. None of us in the car knew how we got on this road. Okay, we just got off to go to the gas. You know, you get off at the gas station, and the road is right there. Okay, somehow we got back on the road, got on another road. The road was parallel to the. We was on the service road. Got on this service road. Drove this service road for like 11 miles, and the service road is like 45, 50 miles an hour. The regular highway, 70 miles an hour. So we doing 50 miles. I'm like, what the hell? So now I'm saying, you know what? Divine time. Something's going on. Let me just go through this. So I went through. We on some side road. We get all the way to the thing. We finally get back on the I-10. Drive about two miles. Tracked the trailer. Turned over. Traffic stopped. Everything screwed up. The trailer was on our side but spun out of control and went on the other side of the highway, doing the opposite, turned over and slid down the highway on its side. This was on the highway, me coming here. Just happened. As I was driving through, I see the, I see the truck. Or the accident had already happened, but it had just happened. They were trying to get the guy out of the truck. The traffic was just piling up. We're on the other side. The cars are slowing down, looking at the other side. I look, I turn to everyone. I say, you see this? This is this. And it just, within a 10 minute, it had to be, the dude was still getting out the truck. We drove down 30 more, about 30, about 20 minutes, a good, good 30 minutes, just saw the cop getting on the highway, opposite direction, trying to run down now to deal with this scene. 30 minutes later, okay, 30 minutes later, the traffic, I said, they gonna be there six out. It's ridiculous. The truck blocked all three lanes, okay? It was on its side, blocking the entire highway of, of I-10 East. We are I-10 West. The point was, was that 
when you flow like this, the first thing I said, divine time. So I said, divine time. Because there's no way I'm on some side road here traveling. I done rode this road a hundred times. How am I on some side road not doing 50 miles an hour? Nah, come on, man. But then I said, wait a minute, I'm bugging. Something's hot. Something's going on. Let me just accept it. Let me go with the flow with this. Energy. I am not this physical body. I am vibration. So the vibes is not right. Oh, we'll be right in a few minutes took me off into some other direction. When we finally got on the I-10, we got on just before the accident. The gospel speaks about this too, about showing up just before the accident or just after it, you know, but never in it, okay? That thing right there. I mention that because as, as, as we close, as we begin to close, um, uh, I'm actually going to finish this page out because the lesson actually ends uh, on, on the next page here. So let me just finish this out. But I'm going to say this, that, that sometimes it gets aggravating living this life. Don't think that it's all hunky-dory and everything's good and halos are coming from head. No, that's not what the spirit, not what the hip-hop spiritual life is about. It's not that. This is about the expansion of your being. What can you see? What can you see? What do you hear? What can you do? This is, this is what it's really about. Your character, your integrity, your trustworthiness. Can you really forgive? Can you walk with a warm heart? This is this is the spiritual life. All this all this other stuff is 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 fluff and 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 honestly commercial. If you really want to talk about the spirit now, we're really talking about real spirit, not some imaginary ghostly figure somewhere. I'm talking about real spiritual abilities that really affect you where you are. And I hope you're seeing what I'm saying because in my profession, like if I was a doctor and I'm teaching this kind of lesson, you would expect me to be of the best doctors or that I'm healing people and doing that. If I was a lawyer, you'd expect me to be winning court cases. You know what I'm saying? Or building buildings if I'm an architect. I'm an MC. I'm a hip hop philosopher. So you should expect me to be on the top of my craft teaching this. And if I'm not, then go ahead and tell me I'm at the bottom of my crab and I'm whack and that's the end of it. But I believe with evidence, not just belief, I know with evidence that I headline every show that I do. And not every, but most. Most of the shows I do, I'm shoved on the end and I don't like it either. But I do know that, no, I'm at the top of my craft. I say that humbly, but I say it to those who are listening to us. I'm not just teaching this. My shit is dope, okay? Let's get it right and let's get it clear. And the reason I'm saying it to you like this is for you to say it like this to yourself. This is not ego. This is not posturing. Get some balls about yourself. Get a spine. Stand upright and declare your divinity, especially if you got evidence of it. Especially if you got evidence of your divinity, declare your divinity. Not to say you above nobody, but to say that God's people are on top. When it comes to hip hop, I know we got a lot of pimps out here. We got a lot of hoes. We got a lot of thieves. We got some murderers too. Drug dealers, we got it all. Hip hop is no joke. We got moguls, business people. We got all type of tech heads. Hip hop is huge like that. But just know, just know, that one of the dopest MCs, and I'll say one of, to be humble here today, uh, one of the dopest MCs represents God. Straight up, unapologetically, I ain't ashamed, afraid, none of that, sorry, none of it. We rep G-O-D over here. We rep divinity over here. We rep the spiritual world over here, and we the dopest MCs in the world. Fuck with it. 
We about to drop some wild shit on y'all that you're not even gonna. You think this last thing we just put out was something? Forget that. That's called the beginning, okay? That's why it's called the beginning because that is nothing in comparison to what me and this dude over here is working on, okay? It's over. <laughs> That's the point. It's over, okay? It is clear and unanimous. God's people are on top. Real hip hop is on top. You want that real raw shit? Come to those who are reading the gospel of hip hop. Come to those who are trying to elevate their children, elevate their community, bring their culture into physical fruition. This is what it's about. Not no ego, not no above nobody. No, no, that's all stupidness. We're not coming here with that. We all one family here and we all talking. We all serious about the same thing. But if what I'm preaching, I'm not living, then come on, what the hell are we preaching? Like, I mean, come on. I don't have to say practice what you preach, but but it's really real like that. And that's the only reason why I'm, I'm saying this at the end of this lesson real quick is that I'm teaching you something about the mind and I'm teaching you something about your being and about immortality and about life and about death and how to look at these things. And why am I saying it like this? Because it got me through. It got me through. And if I'm not the best in my field, then turn me off and say, you know, KRS is thinking he's all into himself and he's this, that, and the other. But when I grab the mic, if I'm not crushing shit, so based on what I'm reading, okay, if I'm not really who I say I am, okay, then you have no reason to hear nothing. You have you can turn me off and say, this dude is all egotistical. He's about himself. He's narcissistic. Let me get away from this dude right now. But if I'm proving everything in which I'm saying, if I'm proving it to you, you're the fool to sit there and not believe in yourself. For you to sit there and be like, yeah, all right, Chris is cool. Uh, yeah, well, he's KRS. Well, you know, I'm just Bob. So I'm just sitting here. I'm nobody. You're missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point. I got a show tonight. Okay, we in Atlantic City. Okay, I'm honored to be here. I stole the Cold Crushes DJ. Do you understand what kind of <laughs> do you understand what kind of upset this is in history? Like this is it. This is it, Kaz. I hope you watch it. Look, this is this is I done took the Cold Crushes. I'm killing shit right now. We're gonna be so out of control. At the end of the day, we got a show tonight in Atlantic City. I'm headlining tonight, Atlantic City. I'm going last again. We crushed them in Virginia just the other day. And what did we do? We gave them the hits, but how do we leave them? We told these people about God and what was in them and the divinity that lives in them. That's what we're preaching. That's what we're going out and using our rhymes and our celebrity for. That's what it is. So again, this is a movement that you can support. Ain't no thieves over here. Ain't no liars over here. Ain't no fake ass people over here. We real with ours. We real with what this is. We preaching on the gospel because it worked for us. If it don't work for nobody, it'll work for you. But for us, we at the top of our class because of the knowledge, not because of talent. Talent is cool. It's cool to have a good rhyme. But if the ancestors ain't talking to you, if you ain't being guided, if if, 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 come on, man, there's so many dope MCs that went to the other side that I still converse with. I call the name of pun all the time. Scott LaRock is shouted every night. Tupac. These dudes, you can call on them to help you write your rhymes. I'm not going to give my secrets away. I'm not giving my secrets away here because you guys are afraid of death. But when you call upon the greatest MCs to say, yo, I need this. I'm writing some shit, Pac. Yo, Pac, help me write this. And you sit there and all of a sudden wildness starts coming in your head. And you write, and you know, I don't talk like this, but my head won't stop. Oh, yo, I got to do You'll realize how much more this thing called hip hop is. You, you'll realize how much more this is. If, if, if you want to control your eating, call pun. If you want to diet, call pun. I call pun when I'm getting ready to fast. I say, pun, help me right now. Come on, help me out, pun. I need you right now. I need the spirit of pun right now. 
to help me. You would think, why part? Because he got the, the lesson to teach on that. You should hear Fat Joe talk about the, you know, their, their last days together. It was a heart wrenching. It's in a video somewhere. I saw it some, somewhere, but I mean, I'm, and Joe tells the story all the time. But you know, it's heart wrenching. You know what I'm saying? How Pun went went out like uh, uh, with that with, with obesity and overweight, and he had an eating disorder. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and who, you know, a lot of people suffering from this. You know, so you know, again, the what is called a patron saint is the one who experienced what you don't want to experience is the saint that you call upon because they're the ones who have who have not so much overcome you know not so much overcome uh, what it is you're trying to overcome but they have a higher understanding they could tell you don't do this because i didn't it was like this don't go here because i didn't it was like that that those are those are the saints that you you want to look at or what we say the afros um, those are the Afros uh, that you actually want to want to take a look at. It's your ancestors, you know. Come on, Pac loves all of us. Easy E, you, you know, you have issues with um, disease and stuff like that. Call upon Easy E, help you get out of that. You know what I'm saying? We should have a chart. Maybe the temple will put one together, a chart of saints uh, and and what their life exemplified, and, and that's who you pray on to not be that, to not exemplify that. You call upon those who, who went down because of that. If, if Like for instance, if, if, if you have to break up a fight and do social work, you know, if you have to break up a fight and and, and, and do so, call upon Scott LaRock. That's, 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 he's the guidance of that kind of resolving dispute. That's how he went out. You know, he gets that respect and that honor. You may want to start looking at your ancestors this way. Don't just cry when they die or when your loved one goes to the other side. They are still here with us. And, 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 and you know, really, if you don't call upon them, they have no reason to, to, to come back here. They have no reason. Once you're on the other side, you're like, this is great. I'm staying over here. Nobody calling me. Nobody want to hear me. I'm gone. You know, and, that's, and so many millions of people live like this. But others of us who discuss issues like this while we are alive, when we pass, we go to the other side with missions. And when we get to the other side with the mission, that's when you got to open your mind, open your being, and listen for the other side. Listen. And they come through all kinds of things, dreams, visions. They also come through the physical environment. Certain songs come on with the theme. You got to be on that. Certain things in the environment that will speak to you, you got to be on that. They're speaking through reality, not just English words or French words or Spanish words. They're speaking through reality. So you got to be able to read reality to read the spirit realm. And that's a, and that's a, a teaching to learn how to read reality. We're going through it right now. We're going through it right now. Uh, how to read reality so that you can see more of it see more people in it, see more of what's going on around it. So that's going to conclude our reading. Let me just uh, hit this hit this last last thing. I'm in my last uh, half hour. Um, um, we underlined 50, paragraph 50. The seventh sense produces a kind of sight that sees the material world as an effect of conscious light, energy, a dream. That's what we're underlining. Now we continue. Everything physical is changing its form be before our very eyes. And that's the truth. Nothing physical is, is what it's going to be. It's actually all deteriorating or rather changing. The things of the material world are indeed temporary and illusionary. Only spirit itself, conscious light energy, is real and everlasting. Everything else is an effect of spirit. And the intelligence of all people, places, and things have their origin in spirit, which has its origin in the light energy of eternal mind. This is how I write songs too, by the way, uh, with this with this right here. Once you're tuned into the oneness, you, you can feel what people feel. And so you can write according to how people feel. And that's, that's how I've been writing for years. Uh, I, you know, some, some songs I write just because I may feel this way. I, I feel I should write this way. But a lot of the stuff I write, the most of the classic stuff is basically um, you feel the environment, you feel the collective consciousness, you you feel 
of what's going on and then interpret that feeling onto song, interpret that feeling into book, interpret that feeling into film, interpret that feeling into dance, interpret, you know, you whatever that is, you 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 gather the feeling of the of the collective consciousness, the whole community, and then deliver your art. Only spirit itself, conscious light energy is real and everlasting. Everything else is an effect of spirit. And the intelligence of all people, places, things have their origin in spirit, which has its origin in light energy of eternal mind. Here, the attuned hip hopper becomes the teacher. Having realized that there is no separation in light energy and that everything and everyone is simply another manifestation of intelligent light energy, the teacher looks beyond the material effects, cravings, and temptations of the material world, manipulating and affecting the intelligence of the material world at its source, which is light energy. That right there, matter of fact, you know what? Um, let's go ahead and highlight 52. Let's go ahead and highlight 52. Because this is, this is the point right here. This, especially this part, here where it says the teacher looks beyond the temporary effects of uh, temporary effects, cravings, and temptations of the material world, manipulating and affecting the intelligence of the material world at its source. See, once you can look past temptation, look past the fact that you're in a traffic jam and you stuck in traffic, if you can look past that. Um, by the way, someone I'm highlighting 52. Yes, um, paragraph 52. Uh, when, when, when you can look past the material world, look past the happenings of the material world and see the spiritual realm, then you th this is where you begin to begin to affect reality from its source, which is the light energy, which is the vibration behind everything. There are no separation. There, there are no separations in light energy or the intelligence that produces it. All is one, including space and time or space time. Light energy simply manifests in a variety of forms and effects. A, a, a variety of forms and effects, forms and effects that we create and manipulate with our perceptions. Now go ahead. You know, grab grab 53 too. You might as well grab 53. And as a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do because it's too much. Go ahead and get 54 as well. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Because let me and I'm gonna show you while I read it right here. This is all one lesson. This is one lesson right here. Okay, I'm I'm at 53. There are no separations in light energy or the intelligence that produces it. Okay, but all this is light. Everything, everything in this room, light. This is light energy, including our physical bodies. We're all connected in this light. It is our perception that's making you think this is a wall, that's a curtain, these are chairs, I got a body, I had a clothes on it. These guys are separate from me. They're separate from each other. They're separate from the floor. All of this is an illusion. All of it. This is all light. This is all light. And there is no separation in this light, light energy, that everything and everyone is simply another manifestation of intelligent light energy. This light is intelligent too. It thinks like you do. And this is gonna be the hard, hardest part to understand, the wall thinks. <clears throat> in order for the wall to remain a wall, something has to keep telling it to be a wall. In order for pen to be pen, something has to keep saying it's a pen. Otherwise, this thing would dissolve. What is making the, you can say, oh, it's plastic with ink. But well, what's plastic and what is ink? What, why is, pla what makes this what it is? We don't think that far. We just say the pen is a pen, it's dead. It's just an object. No, but nothing in nature is dead. Nothing and everything, including plastic, comes from nature, including plastic. You can't make nothing in this earth that doesn't come from the earth. Now, you can misuse it like they do plastic and styrofoam and all these type of things that we make uh, in that sense, but it still comes from the earth. 
still comes from there. You can't go somewhere else and get something. But no, it's coming from the earth. Come from the earth. Comes from an organic source. So why wouldn't it still be alive? Why wouldn't everything still be alive? Why do you think trees are dead just because you cut them down? You cut the tree down, you say the tree is dead. How do we know that? How do we know that wood it doesn't live on in other forms, in other ways? How do we know it's not conscious? Just because you shellac it, turn it into something else. How do you know it's not conscious? Why do you eat dead food if the food itself is not alive It's on some level? It's giving you life on some level. Chicken, you cut the chicken head off. Supposed to be chicken dead, right? No, wrong. You eat that meat and you get life. So is the chicken really dead? Ugh. You eat the hamburger, you eat the fish, the salmon. Salmon swimming. How could you eat a dead thing and get life? It don't make no sense. That means the dead fish is not dead. We don't know what death is. That's This is the problem right here. We've been taught to fear some experience. But how could you eat a fish that's supposedly dead and dead for a few days too? Matter of fact, dead, frozen, processed, put into a plat, freeze dried. You can take that same fish, unfreeze dry it, pop it in your mouth, and live. Life somehow, life went into you. If that thing was truly dead, you couldn't eat it and live. That don't make no sense. See, this is why we have to apply philosophy to this so we can logically get it. Life brings life. If you eat, okay, this uh, paper is dead. <laughs> or so we think. What am I talking about? Right. I, I would say, okay, uh, this wire, I will assume that this wire is dead. I will assume that it's dead. Now, the reason I'm assuming that is because if I eat this, I'm not going to get any life from it. So I think if I chew this pen, I'm not going to live. So I think. So there's one level of this that says, no, Chris, the pen is not alive. It's not like chicken. You eat the chicken, you're going to live. Okay, I see what you're saying. The chicken's dead. The fish is dead. The cow is dead. But somehow you eat their meat and you live. That means some aspect of them is still alive, even frozen, processed, whatever it is. If you can still eat it and get life, then something is still alive in it. I get that. But I would take it further. What is it alive? You only eating fish and chicken and beef because you was told to. Some pork. Veal, you know, you can go on and on with curry goat and all that, but you were told to eat that. Why you don't eat um um snakes? Snake is good. You ever had a cobra? How about termites? A bowl of dead termites for breakfast as a cereal. How about roaches? Roaches go down really nice. In fact, science says. That it is better for us to eat insects than anything that we eat right now, even plants. <laughs> for all you vegetarians out there, it's actually healthier to eat a bowl of crickets than any fruit or vegetable, any. But you ain't doing that. Them fried tarantulas that they be cooking in Thailand, <laughs> big ass black tarantulas, they frying them crunching them. Like, this is it right now. Doritos. Arr, they out. Why we can't do that? It's all here. It's all here. It's all here. All of it. All of it is in your mind. There used to be a show called Fear Factor. I don't know if y'all remember Fear Factor. They used to put the craziness in front of people. Crazy. Bulls nuts. They had squirmy stuff still alive, and you supposed to put it in your mouth. Was just crazy. But it was, the show was called Fear Factor. It was like, no, this is a, a worm from the Amazon thing. You can eat this, and nothing's going to happen to you. You can eat this. In fact, it's full of protein, vitamins, minerals, 
everything, some thick ass snake worm. And it's like, this thing's moving. They chop it up and it's moving individually. Individual chopped up pieces of moving and they hand you a fork. <laughs> Why you can't eat that? It's all in your mind. What is not alive is the question I'm getting to. And trying to expand your mind beyond saying, oh, that's alive and that's dead. Mm -mm. That's colonial thinking. That's what we're going to end this, this lecture on, this, this lecture, this talk on, is realize what death really is and realize what life really is. Life don't end. That's why you can eat a dead thing and stay alive. <laughs> you know, life don't end just because something stops moving. You know, this, I don't want to get into the, the mummification, uh, the, the, the comedic mummification practices, you know, about those bodies don't die. You know, there's a way to tap into that and, and believe these folks try to do it. They don't have the knowledge, they don't have the technique, they don't have the character. So they just got the dead body there, you know, as a mummy. But this is a technology. You're supposed to be able to deal with that and bring that person back to life. Imagine that. Imagine the science that you get mummified, you're going to come back. You're going to go somewhere else and come back. And most people think that the mummies that they see today, um, they, they say they already robbed the tombs and these mummies all were there. Ancestors came to me and told me, Chris, they didn't rob the tombs. It was us. We, we came back <laughs> and took our stuff. And we came back in the form of the thieves that would have came. These were the masters of the universe. You don't rob the Pharaoh. See, they're, they're trying to lower the Pharaoh because these people, again, black kings on the throne. I want to put the race on it, but I got to do it because that's what this is all about, too. Paleoanthropology, science, they're trying to degrade black people and the history of black people. And these are black kings on the throne and queens, Kandakes. Negus Nagas, these are the masters of the universe. They knew what was about to happen, what happened, how it was going to happen. The whole thing is a setup. But you won't know this unless you, your eye is open. I just wrote a rhyme. It said, they hold in a hundred, but they don't really know what a one dollar means. They slaves to slave economies, sellouts and traders, posing as hip hop. We got a lot of these. You know, and the point is, you hold in a hundred, but you don't know what a one dollar means. Slaves to slave economies. The hundred dollar is not as valuable as the one dollar. You see, it takes a hundred one dollars to make a. You don't get to a hundred dollars without the one dollar, and the one dollar is the dollar that got all the knowledge on. See, those that understand what a nation is about and what currency is about, then you understand, you look at that dollar a little differently. You look at the dollar a little differently and you say, look at that pyramid on that dollar. That's black folk. There's no way around that. There's, there's no, I'm not, it's not racial. It's not, there's no way around that. Pyramid, black people. There's no, no way around that. There's no way around that. Then on top of that, the pyramid on the dollar is a Kushite pyramid. That's not an Egyptian pyramid. The dimensions of the pyramid, all Kushite. Kushite, the tall pyramids, the tall ones. That's what's on the dollar, not the base, the, the wide base pyramid that you see in Giza and in Teotihuacan, Teotihuacan, in um, you know, New Mexico, um, in Mexico, you know those pyramids. The no, that's not what's on the dollar. The Kushite pyramid is what's on the dollar. Did you know that Rome defeated all kinds of African nations, including European nations? Defeated the Carthaginians. Rome defeated the Phoenicians. These are huge, major armies. Rome ran all up in Egypt. Ran all up in Libya. Ran all up. That's how Rome got powerful. Then in 24 BC, they got to Kush and got their asses wiped out. Did you ever hear that story? Nah, because we live in Rome. 
So you're not going to hear that. You're not going to hear about how Queen Amarina's and her son, Prince Akinadad, 24. Go look it up after you hear this. Go look it up. Cush, 24 BC, Rome tried to come in. They already wiped up Egypt, already running through Africa. They, they got the Kush, the dopest military in the world. The archers, Kush archers. Imagine from, you can't, they used to tell stories about how the Kush archers would hit you from, from far, like arrows. You wouldn't even see the archer. You only saw the arrow. They called them the fingers of God. That's what they call their arrows, the fingers of God. Them arrows used to come out the sky. Okay, you didn't even, now imagine, you don't even see the archer, but they can see you. A hundred miles away, this ain't a gun. This ain't infrared. This ain't the die. Mm -mm. These are archers. You got to know the wind. You got to hear the wind. You got to know where, where you're standing. And then you got to pull back with the right, right stretch and then aim and boom. And that arrow hits you so precisely, you be talking to your troops. Now, troops, we're going to. And the arrow go right through your motherfucking mouth. <laughs> That's Kush. They ain't going to tell you about that. Augusta Caesar, Kush, Queen Amarinas defeated Augusta Caesar, 24 BC. They could have took Rome. Kush could have took Rome. All they said was, we don't want taxation. Don't tax us. Don't come here taking our money and ask. You can have Egypt. We don't like Egypt no way. Kush and Egypt were always at war with each other. They, you can have Egypt. We don't want Egypt. They never entered Kush. Never. Never. Rome could not even deal with Kush. Ever. Okay? Ever. They dealt with Kush. You know how they got, you know how Rome got Kush? The kids. Later. Centuries, like 400 years later, Christianity comes to Africa and the Roman Christian church conquers Kush with gifts and change their name from, you know, Khufu and Shaka to Dom DeLuise Josephus. And these dudes was ghosts. Okay, that was it. They all became Christians. They joined the church. And then that was the end of it. And, and then Kush, that part of Kush became Christian. And then, of course, there was a Muslim invasion. And there was all of this. And then it just became something else. And now it's UNESCO. And now there's a whole sea over the place. And they have this, it's ridiculous now. It's, it's just ridiculous. But uh, the lead excavators of Kush, by the way, is Poland now. Just so you know, the craziest thing, okay, the lead, like if you really want to know for, know about Kush, you don't go to Africa no more, okay? If you really want to know about Kush, you have to go to Europe and specifically Poland because Poland was the lead excavators of, of what was going, what everybody was pulling stuff out of Kush. They were pulling it out of Kush because they were going to flood the whole, one of the most important regions of Kush. They were going to, they actually flooded it already, Um they, they, they actually flooded the area already, but UNESCO went in there, took out temples, took out as much stuff as they could actually take. Um, you can see some of these temples in the Museum of Natural History. The Louvre got something in France. Um, uh, Poland got a lot of stuff as well. There's about five countries that got stuff from uh, from this excavation. But I just mentioned that to give you just some footnotes on, 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 on that. The reason I mentioned Kush at, at the end of our, our, our session here um, uh, is is also because, you know, we as Black people, we, we mastered a lot. We conquered death. This was our shining achievement. This was the shining achievement that we realized what death was and we realized how to conquer death and come back to life. And this is the story of the Christ. This is the story. This is the old, the story is told over and over again about how we conquered death and we realized this. When we knew that another force was going to come, because of our knowledge, we drew another force on us. And when we drew that other force on us, that's the, that's the colonial force we have today. The true masters of the universe were never caught. We're, 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 never, we're never slaves. We're, never, we're not that. Our messages are left all over the world and all over in architecture, in art. You got to just know where to look. And that's why I refer back to the dollar. It's a Kushite pyramid on that dollar and above that is the all-seeing eye um uh of Heru. <laughs> 
Um, uh, and and these are all Black African concepts, by the way. And and I say that also. I want to add this other this other piece to it. All of Africa was not this, and that's why the the America and Rome continues the African tradition. And did you hear what I just said? This is how Rome and America, really Greece, Rome and America and Britain continues the African tradition. This is not about black people. This is about black character. All black people don't have this character, get it right. All white people are, are not barred from this character. Asians, Native Americans as well. It's a bloodline now. It used to be only about black people. We were the only ones with the character and only a certain group of us were the ones with the character. We call them hip hopians. They match our, our they match our character directly. Early humans were breaking, MC and graffiti writing, DJing. That's paleoanthropology. I you ain't gotta take my word for it at all. Neanderthals were dancing, MC, poetry, doing graffiti art, uh, Cutting, mixing, and scratching all types of things, okay? And of course, making music with their mouth beatboxing. I ain't got to get into street fashion, language, knowledge, trade, all of that. The first humans were doing hip hop's elements straight up and down. We call them hip hopians. And if you can't see yourself like this, you allow the colonists to take your mind, no matter what race you are from. It's not about race, race is an illusion. What it's really about is character. What's your character? That's what we're reading right here. What's your character? That's going to determine if you godlike. That's going to determine whether you divine. Like you can talk all day. We can talk. We can wear clothes, beads. We can read books all day. You can do it all day. But when somebody transgresses you and then comes back and says, man, I'm sorry, what do you do? When there's somebody hungry and you got an extra sandwich, would you say, damn, I might be hungry later on? What do you do? Somebody's hungry right in front of you. What do you do? See, these are the things that quick moment, quick, quick, quick. Somebody jumps up. Hey, come here, nigga. What do you do? I ain't know. How do you cook what? what? What do you do? Somebody disrespecting you. What do you do? The divine have a way of knowing. Say, somebody disrespecting me. First thing I should think of is, well, how am I disrespecting myself? Because this dude's a dream character. <laughs> so obviously I'm dreaming dude up. There's something going on with me <laughs> that I, that's making me draw this dude to me or draw this. In, in fact, maybe let me change something within myself and, and this situation will go away. And you'll notice that every time you change something about yourself, the outside changes too. And you do this long enough, you do it as long as I have, you start controlling your environment. You'll start controlling your environment and controlling everything around your environment. And those that learn this lesson, they know what it is. I tell people all the time, people say, man, I, was, I just saw you the other day on the internet. Yo, you was kicking it. Yo. And then I, we meet. He said, this is crazy. I was just watching you yesterday. I say, you have a very powerful mind. And I say that all the time because I mean it. You have a powerful mind because not everybody, I don't meet everybody. But every once in a while, you meet that one dude who said, I just was talking about you yesterday, and now I see you. You might be divine, straight up. You may not think it, you may not, but those attributes are the attributes of the divine. Those kinds of things is what happens. We live in a society that just, just makes, that trivializes everything. You know, the Matrix, Matrix 4, I don't know if y'all went and saw it yet. I think it's corny. However, Matrix 4, um, they did have a line in there where uh, Neo was sitting on the edge of the bed again. And the chick with the blue hair is sitting next to him. And he's like, I don't even know what to believe anymore. And she then says this line that I'm actually going to transcribe uh, and, and, and use this line. But she says something to the effect that, and you should go back and watch it. She says that the matrix has a way of trivializing everything that's sacred to us. It makes it mean nothing. And that's how they win. And they said it right there in the matrix. And I caught that. I said, wow, these dudes is up on it. 
Because I wrote something similar to this in another book that's coming out this year called An, An Introduction to Hip Hop, the book version of it, An Introduction to Hip Hop. And I wrote about how we only know about the Italian mobster, the Italian gangster, like in pop culture. We only know about the Italian gangster mobster. We don't know about Italian architects and Italian astronomers. What we know is Gotti and, and, and uh, Al Capone or a pizza shop. And that's such a disrespect to Italian people and Italian culture, such a disrespect. But that's what we know in pop culture. You think Chinese, and you say Chinese, you lump them in with Japanese and Korean. People make the mistake all the time, thinking all Asian people are from the same culture and weren't warring amongst themselves, like Japanese and Chinese weren't actually warring amongst themselves. We don't, ignorant, just they don't even know, just it's Chinese. And the ignorance is just falling out your mouth. And, 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 and we're not paying attention. We're not paying attention. Uh, uh, well, we're just not paying attention. We're just not paying attention. And you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. I'm coming up on 303, uh, three hours and three minutes. Um, I can go on forever with this. I think you get my point. And um, I was supposed to finish this reading uh, here, but but what I'm going to do is, um, well, you know what? I'll end here. I, I did say let's um, uh, highlight 52, 53, and 54. 52, 53, and 54. I'll end here because I'll just go on and on. Uh, and, and and this is this is this is what this is. I'll, I'll, let me read these three paragraphs because they're highlight and 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 bring this to a conclusion. Here, the attuned hip hopper becomes the teacher, having realized that there is no separation in light energy and that everything and everyone is simply another manifestation of intelligent light energy. The teacher looks beyond the temporary effects, cravings, temptations of the material world, manipulating and affecting the intelligence of the material world at its source, which is light energy. There are no separations in light energy or the intelligence that produces it. All is one, including space and time or space time. Light energy simply manifests in a variety of forms and effects, forms and effects that we create and manipulate with our perception. But you can manipulate light energy with your mind simply by expecting it to obey your commands. This is the key, expecting it to obey your commands. Yes, it is really that simple. And this is why the Temple of Hip Hop teaches spiritual training before, uh, before and beyond traditional praise and worship. That's a distinction, too, which is why we went ahead and got 54. That's a distinction. And as a matter of fact, put a star next to that last line. You may even want to underline it because it explains the temple of hip hop on another level. It says this is why the temple of hip hop teaches spiritual training before and beyond traditional praise and worship. We don't look down on praise and worship. It's important to praise your God, praise your ancestors, and worship, meaning take care of your God and your ancestors. But we, we, we suggest training first so that you know what you're doing. The training of one's spirit is all about the releasing of one's fears and doubts and getting past the cravings of the physical body for real. The spiritual training offered by the to see, and this is also why this, this is why I'm reading it because this has to get highlit too. The training of one's spirit is all about the releasing of one's fears and doubts. That, that, that's it. You can close the book now. That's it. The training of one's spirit is all about the releasing of one's fears and doubts. And getting past the cravings of the physical body for real. The, tra the spiritual training offered by the temple of hip hop is a re-education as to what is real and possible spiritually. What is real and possible, not belief and all of that. Just what do we know is real? Here, learning to live beyond one's physical senses is all about freeing oneself from living exclusively within the interpretations of one's physical senses, uh, living interpretations of one's physical senses of physical reality. Yeah. 
beyond faith. And a matter of fact, you know what? Um, 56. Go ahead and let's just end at 56 too. 56 is going to be the last one. I'm going to say start here. Go ahead and highlight all of it. That's one whole lesson. 55 and 56. We got 52, 53, 54, 55, and 56. That is the gist of this lesson right here and sums up a little bit about what the temple teaches when we say hip hop spiritual lifestyle. This is this is this is what we're talking about right here. Here, learning to live beyond one's physical senses is all about freeing oneself from living exclusively within the interpretations of one's physical senses of physical reality. Physical reality is not just your physical senses. It's your intuition. It's your sense of oneness. It's your communication with other beings in other dimensions beyond your physical five senses. There's other stuff going on outside of your five senses. That's what you got to realize. And that reality, there is re your ancestors and your family members are real in another reality that can see this one, is connected with this one. It's just you can't get to it because your whole perception is your five senses. So if you can't smell them, taste them, see them, hear them, or touch them, you say they don't exist. That's a very limited way to look at reality and life. The five senses tell you only what they know. Now you have a sixth sense that tells you what it knows and you know that ain't no five senses. That's something else. But yet there's something else. And the more you go into these something else's, the closer you get to the real spirit realm, which is real, which is real. I use it every day. I'm in it now. I'm here. I am here. But if you can't see it, then that's it. You just, you just can't see it. And that's what it's about. It's about blindness versus sight. It's about realization versus ignorance. It's about faith versus fear, or should I say courage versus fear, or in a faith sense, confidence versus fear. You're going to be afraid or you're going to stand on confidence? Which is it? Most people be like, I'm going to be confident, but go right back to that fear. <laughs> and this is the point to a spiritual teacher, which is what I hope I'm imparting to you today. Everything I'm teaching you today, I'm living it right now. Everything. I got to practice this stuff, okay, every day all day. It's a knee-jerk reaction. This is what it is, okay? People acting stupid, I got to see them as some stupidity within myself. People saying all type of craziness, I got to say, yeah, they're ignorant, or let me go and check myself and see what's, what's really within myself. Why am I, what's battling within me that's causing all of this uh, uh, out, out here? No, I live in peace. Therefore, anybody coming my way with something other than peace, you only going to be here for a matter of minutes, really. You're something passing through because my reality does not even, it's not even about you. It's not even about that. Uh, and, you know, so on. So, so this is, this is where we end. Beyond faith, once you know and operate within the reality of the spirit realm, you shall habitually, you hear the word habitual? Habitual. That's the key word. It's a habit. You ain't even got to think about it. It's a habit. Like flame, you touch the hot, oh, have it. My hand's hot, I got burnt, oh, have it. You ain't got to think about it. You shall habitually expect the laws of such a realm to obey your command. Habitually, you expect it. Let's look at it again. Beyond faith, once you know and operate within the reality of the spirit realm, you know it and you operate in it. You shall habitually expect the laws of such a realm, the laws of the spirit realm, to obey your commands. And that's the word, obey your commands. This was the knowledge of kings, the knowledge of Kandake queen mothers. This was the knowledge right here. And this is what made, this is what gives the impression that the king is a lofty, spine straightening kind of guy. And he stands forward. Yeah, the king is that. But that's what outsiders got to see. They, those that didn't even understand these concepts came before the king and saw an upright black man standing there discussing what I'm discussing now. And what did they do? They couldn't comprehend it. So they tried to rob him. 
The first of them got killed straight up. You are no match. But then the king went away and said, but there's more coming. And if there's a weakness within our community, they're going to seize on that. And there are many weaknesses in our community. So we're over, y'all. <laughs> Either we straighten up these weaknesses so they can't come in, or we over. And the priests knew, ain't nobody going to straighten up the weaknesses. We've been preaching to them for 100 years. We built pyramids. We made sanitation. We built architecture. We got agriculture. We tell them about the universe. Don't nobody care. They're like, get out of here with all that. Because they were doing that 5,000 years ago, too. <laughs> okay. Just, don't think that what back in the day, civilizations was just so, not at all. Uh, only a few of us ever spoke like this. Only a few of us ever listened to this type of speak. Only a few of us are interested in this type of life. Everybody else is not. And it's not to look down on them. We're not looking down on nobody. It's to realize who we are and get with the work, get with the responsibility of who you are. You are a God. Therefore, you are a servant, period. You are the sun. The sun shines on everyone. Sun one. The sun shines on everyone. Thieves, murderers, the light comes to everyone. Okay. Knowledge reigns supreme. R-A-I-N-S. The water drips on everybody. Everybody gets it. Don't matter who you are, whether the what. Don't matter. You get in sunlight. You get in water. The earth holds up. The ground takes in blood, spit, vomit, feces. The the earth drinks everything. Okay, and produces everything. Be like the earth. Be like the sun. Be like the universe, serve everything in existence. Why? Because you serve in yourself. You selfish little, you are really serving yourself when you understand that there is no difference between you and everything that you are looking and seeing and perceiving with just five senses, okay? It's all you. So you want to diss you? Go diss your friends. You want to cheat you? Go cheat your friends. You want to lie to you? Go lie to your family and friends. You want to diss it? Go do this to them. You're doing it to yourself. And when you're tired of doing it to yourself, stop doing it to them. Hey, you'll stop doing it to yourself. This is what it is. Now, let me also put a disclaimer on this. This is only for those that walk the spiritual path. Sorry. Got to put the disclaimer on it. These laws do not apply to those that are not walking this path. If you're not walking this path, then the laws that you won't live with are the laws you live with and the conditions that those laws create are what you live by. That's it. Got to put that disclaimer on it. This, what we're talking here is only for the gods. If you are truly of a divine being, then you have a responsibility and, and you have you know, you, you have you have an ability and a responsibility. Ability and responsibility. And you can say, no, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, go watch the, the Last Airbender. Uh, nice movie, The Last Airbender. They said, you are the one. He was like, ah, I'm running. I'm running. He didn't want to be the dude. You know, he, he didn't want to be that guy. Most of us don't want to be. You ask anybody that's open their eyes, be like, do you really want to sit here in front of a computer and teach this? No, no. I want to go back to Coachella. <laughs> I want to go back. I want to enjoy this. I, I want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy the fruits of, oh, man. So, son, what I have to say, because it's part of the, the, the thing, uh, it's, it's part of the thing, is like, had this visualization, I got to say it. So all the while I say, look, when I get back to California, I got this favorite restaurant. Some of y'all in Cali already know. It's called Gladstones. It's in Malibu Beach, California, uh, out there, right? And uh, it's Gladstone. So me and the owner of Gladstones, we, we're really close. We've been going there for years. I did all types of lectures there. It's crazy, okay? This, this is like a 15-year relationship we have with this restaurant. This there called Gladstones, and it's on, the, on right on the beach, too. So I said, when I get to L.A., I haven't been in L.A. since COVID, all this, almost two years. I said, man, when I get to L.A., I'm going right to my restaurant. I'm going to eat. I'm going to relax. 
We're going to chill by the beach. It's going to be that. I didn't check my visualization. My mind just says, get to Gladstones. So I get there, right? So I'm getting, I get there. We park, do what they're going. So we all sit in there. We all chilling. So we order up the crazy, okay? We all lobster tripping and salmon and all types of eating of all types of stuff. So I said, yeah, I got my money. I'm chilling. I, I'm straight. I can pay for this. Like, you know, so I'm ordering up the thing, the beach right there. We having a good time. Our friends over. We chilling, this, that, the other. She said, okay, so the check. We ready to pay the check. I'm getting ready to order something else. I'm like, yo, let's order some more food. Get another bottle of wine on the table. Let's get it popping. So the dude comes out and he says, all this is taken care of already. You already have a $500 tab. Would you like us to go over it? I was like, what? <laughs> you remember, you saw my face. I was like, well, wait, what? <laughs> they went, wait, wait. You're going too fast. $500. The owner just threw it on us real quick. $500. And we must have ate up probably $499. Okay. <laughs> like, we ate that food up. But it was a shocker because, again, I look back on I said to Simone as I was driving off, as we was driving off, I said, you know, the affirmation that I put forward, it didn't include me paying for the food. <laughs> it never included me paying. And you got to be careful with your affirmations. You have to visualize but be specific because the universe is exact. Okay? It will give you exact. So I'm, thinking, I'm just going to eat at Gladstones. I'm going to be by the beach. Never visualize paying for nothing. Never visualize none of that. Got there. We ate up a storm. Got up and left. Just like that. Got up and left, okay? And I said, see that? Because usually I go there, I pay. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm, 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 I'm a lovely guy there. I go down with all the type of stuff. I pay. But obviously, you know, because of that, because of the 15-year relationship, because of uh, because I haven't been there in two years, uh, so I get in there and they lay us out. And I had like, what, well, we almost had 10 people with us. <laughs> we almost had like 10 people. And we charged it all up. And even went over, they didn't charge us that. And we had extra drinks and stuff like that. They just sat us down and just let us eat. And we just ate. And that was the end of it. And I thought about that. I said, man, you know, this is how the sage eats. I see the Buddha now. It's, it's not begging for a meal. It's that you, the people, there they are people that respect your teaching. And they happen to own restaurants. They happen to be lawyers. They happen to be doctors. They happen to be heads of state. They happen to be governors, mayors. They happen to be drug dealers. They happen to be this one or that. You know, whatever it is, they respect your message. So when you come forward, they're willing to give you for free. They just want to, they want to unite with your being. It's not about the money. It's about just, just unite with the being. I like what you're about. Your, your environment is cool. Let me be in the environment. And I'm willing to bring my resources to the environment to make it happen. That's what we're experiencing. That's exactly what, what, what we are experiencing. And so, you know, I'm way over my time now. Um, uh, we will continue next week on um, page 346. Um, Sun One is going to, as usual, close us out. Uh, but I just put that, put that on you. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Your being is so powerful, especially if you're here listening to us right now. Your being is so powerful. Stop putting it to use. Stop testing it. You try little things first. Start testing it. See how often the lights flicker in your environment. KRS-One, Temple of Hip Hop. I'm out. Yeah. And the calendar. You know what it is. It can be very scary um, for those just getting into this. Um... But again, this is about um, decreasing your fears and moving from that standpoint now, just to um, confirm a lot of what teachers saying there, even with the flicker lights. I got the flicker light on the on the um, porch right now. Mm. Um, my girls experience it. Her, my daughter, they're all of a sudden. This is new. This is new. Reset, flick a light. Okay. This morning, go because it's pretty cold. 
in the northeast. I had to turn on my wife turns on the basement in the or the heat on in the basement. She keeps saying, I smell fire. Mm. I smell fire. Yesterday, she was saying, I smell fire. Today, teacher's talking about, well, the second you smell fire, all of a sudden you awake. Now, to be what, what I'm trying to show you is literally the lesson being taught, but in my living hip hop spiritually, it all happens right before the lesson gets taught. And you should really technically have a similar um, experience, I would imagine. Me and Tony Tone got off the highway. He had to use the restroom. We get there, the whole place flickering lights, looking like it's a stage show. <laughs> and I, of course, I got my eye. I'm like, yo, this would be a dope video right here. I could use that. This shit going off and popping and this and the third. Um, another another time, um, right? Are, are we in the intersection or are, are waiting for the cars to move? He, he, oh, he, he jokingly did it. Uh, to go tap the horn, I was like, "No, nah, Tone, don't do that." I was like, "Don't worry about it. It's okay." Uh, uh, and he did it, or uh, like he could have, he could have did it. Uh, so he, in his mind, was I said the one feeling the same exact thing that no, it's not that serious. But come on, my nigga, <laughs> the light is green. Uh, but no, this is that's creating a timing of life which was the same thing, right? Or as that was happening, literally, right before that, we were supposed to go pick up Hakeem Green. Shout out to Hakeem Green Channel Live. Um, and so we're going to go get Hakeem. And I ended up telling him, like, yeah, we're going to be 20 minutes. Really, it was going to be 30 minutes, but I figured I'd give him, give him that extra time to expect and then or whatever, really be ready uh, because he was visiting friends and shit. So we know what it is. But so first when he asked for the ride, he said, I need a ride. He said, will you be able to? I said, we're going to have to. No problem. Bam. I, I did feel I should have possibly had him come to us. But no, clearly none of that was supposed to happen. Um, because he wasn't even coming with us. He hit us up. Uh, I think we were maybe like 10, 15 minutes away. It's like, yo, I'm not, uh, or I'm going to stay here and just come up tomorrow. Cool. No problem. Turn around and start heading our way. Now, the things that that might have saved us from, who knows? But we made it here safely and with no problems whatsoever. And it's that type of movement that, nah, you really should pay attention to and uh, relax. That's why or I added into the affirmation, which I'm going to read before we go, to be patient. Be patient. Um, even especially with developing your spiritual abilities. Uh, where We're aware that some of this may be hard to believe because if you don't experience it, um, if if your seventh sense isn't totally active, but again, or you could go back to where we were teaching in the Christmas le uh, lesson where um, we were talking about the healthiness of your pineal gland and the different things ingesting that calcify that, that that also is very much linked in this house, in this temple. The temples are right here with, within this um, that you want to take care. And that those are keys in order to unlocking a lot of the extra senses that essentially you get indoctrinated out of before you can even know that they exist. Um, and like, I, I remember, or one of the time, or actually it was at the, um, 
at the museum when the, when they was trying to do the museum. Our teacher came through to uh, shut it down uh, at the request of Africa Bambada and other pioneers um, that essentially weren't being consulted for the museum at the time. And at at the end or, or whatever we or when we were all leaving. Because I, I, I knew time was of the essence. It, it wasn't really an opportunity to sit there and speak with the teacher. So I decided to use my MC in real quick in the alley. <laughs> we all just walk in. Or he's going, he's going to get in his van. I know what he he go get in his van, look at us and say, Good night. <laughs> and that was gonna be it. So I'm like, all right, I have to take this opportunity to tell him what I've been experiencing. And essentially the the rhyme that I experienced was the seventh sense that it was occurring to me already. I was, I, I literally, it, it, it sounds like prophecy, but it's not prophecy because I, well, maybe it is, but I saw it <laughs> like I already dreamt what we were going to do for like years, years. Broke it down, said it, sent a dream. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get it. Um, or just that quick part, just to show you guys what was really said, and then to show you everything from going on toward 2012, going off tour, doing other things, coming back together, getting to this reality that we're in right now. And mind you, and then when a uh, teacher said the 10 years, it's been 10 years, 2012, 2022. And so I just got hit sitting over there <laughs> where I was like, right, okay, right. Um, and really it's just to show those or really to give encouragement to those who may be experiencing this, that it is real. Again, we're not trying to convince those that don't believe. That's not of our concern. It's the real, the actual hip hoppers who are really living this and coming into these certain things, especially as the words give you, give your uh, mind the um, description of it, because the more words you have, the more explanations you have, you can now see it and now know what's going on. Now you see the blinking light and understand why this is happening. Um, now the 111, 222, or 202, 303 keeps popping up and that's all you keep seeing. Now you start to get an understanding and start to, or let that give you confidence and help you to realize that you are on the correct path, that you're going, that you're heading in the right direction. Um, you just may need to really make a real decision that, no, okay, I'm going to take this seriously. I am actually, or, or the things that they're saying is so real in my life, I'm not going to deny or act like I'm not having the experiences that I'm having. I'm actually going to be okay with it. Um, even though it's not normal for most of the people that are around me, or they're not having these experiences, I'm having these experiences, or I'm around someone who these crazy things are happening to, or, or, or miracles, or, or manifestations that you see they're doing, you, you, you're watching it, um, and to know that, no, it is, it, it's a purposeful being that's making it happen. And so to know that, um, it's just like, how, how many things that teacher brought up are, are like, right, his, his, he had to go homeless at the right time. He had to go to the right shelter at the right time. He had to meet Scott LaRock at the right time. And then look at how many people are connected to that in the future that needs that same 
exact timing to happen exactly. Like nothing can fuck that up. Or this whole room disappears. And if you look at, or, or I know from my study of hip hop, how many people said, no, listen, before I made my first album, we sat in the car and listened to Criminal Minded all the way to the studio. We got in the studio, laid our stuff down, da 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 You could start erasing other classic albums out of hip hop's history if all of that doesn't happen with our teacher at that specific time. Here, I just heard, right, 50 Cent the other day um, talking or saying, oh, the, is the bridge is over for me. The bridge is over. Is that that was hip hop. The, the way he came in that competitiveness at that time, that ignited me. You don't get no in the club. You don't get no 21 questions. You don't get no, no 50, no G unit. So then you got no power. You got no whatever uh, uh, the BMF that he's doing now, I think, vitamin is water. vitamin water. You get none of this. You get none. You start, you got to start chopping stuff. And, and there are so many, so many that, and, and they're all telling it. They're all saying it. So this is where we say, look specifically at what's going down. We are, we were having dinner at Chili's. I'm telling them this whole story about me going to see you at Rock the Bells. I miss you at Rock the Bells. You end up leaving, going off. This is where I get cussed out by Q-Tip for giving them my CD twice. Uh, MC Supernatural cussed me out because I keep asking him where you at. Crazy that I'm chilling with Laura Hill's children. This had a third. I get done with the with the um, story. I open my phone. There's a picture of you in, under... KRS one at Rock the Bells in Chicago, right there. Perfect timing. Last night. This is last night. And I'm, I'm just trying to show y'all that nah, this is this is real, 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 real. <laughs> and, and with that, support. <laughs> this is a way that you can help support. And to show you or, or give you a, a quick insight into our organization meetings about this, we're looking at this. We're getting about a thousand copies of this in order um, to have. Uh, and so the cost of it, essentially, we're, we're hoping that the Temple of Hip Hop um, members, yourself, uh, participates in purchasing this which would open up the freeness of this that our teacher could have at shows, uh, give off some at off the stage should he want or be able to have them at the merch table. But it, our support of this frees it and makes it free for the people. Um, and so it's a way that you can help get this into the hands of other hip hoppers all across um the world even so artists artists other artists would love that we, we, we're actually um we need a quick batch now because like tonight for instance yes yeah, right you know we could right. slid one to slick greg hit rock him with one kane needed one yes indeed you know and it, they they definitely take that put it right on they wouldn't let them advertise it as well right Right, no doubt. And it, it, right. And so well, we'll have it in I want to say it only takes about uh five to seven business days. And I believe they're being they're beginning printing them literally tomorrow. Um so that's going down, and that's uh one of the things that you could do obviously to help us out. You can always also donate to the hip hop preservation at Gmail on through PayPal. Um, and there it is. I'll, I'll end with this affirmation. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Ra Haru One, DJ Tony Tone, Tony Crush. Can I share? Oh, Can share, you? please yes. share. I am lucky enough to be doing this before it was called hip hop. Yeah. As I meet him, the chair, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get, get, get right in the hot seat, no. get sit down upon the throne. Tony, I'm a little older than the teacher, 
little. <laughs> <laughs> um, I come into hip hop 1975. Um, started with a group called the Brothers Disco, Breakout and Baron. It was just KK Rockwell, the voice of KK Rockwell. Then we built the Funky Four and the Funky Four Plus One. I later broke off and start the Cold Crush. I meet a KRS one. Me and KG was on B Boy Records. We did an album called Troopers. Um, they took us down to Atlanta <coughs> to do the Jack the Rappers. I meet a KRS KRS one that I I hadn't seen them, so I meet a KRS one. Happens not to be a KRS one. Find that out later. A cat named Levi. Jerry Levi was impersonating. Yes. Um, but the teacher that I'm around now, for years I've been telling people we are blind here. Not here. We blind here. Um, because they feed in us things and we are going with it. Um, another brother shared with me about Moors and all that coming up as a Zulu. Um, I have radio, I have started a radio station last year called Origins. As we go through the teachings today, he comes up on origins. So it's a connection. Um, I got into a situation in 91, not going, but ever since then, I've been trying to live a humble life, a hip hop life, a hip hop culture life before me is the culture. And we, it's, it's got to be like, it's got to be grown. It's got to be nurtured. It's, it's got to be believed in. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here today um, because it's to find out other people are thinking and going in the same direction is a blessing to all of us. Um, that we know we can reach out and grab somebody's hand and we got we can build a wall and support. We have a wall and support. Everything I do is hip hop. Everything. Uh, I have a company called hip hops dot beers. I don't drink. I stopped drinking at 17, but I had an opportunity to be a partner in this, so I, I'm I'm behind it. Um but like I said, the origin thing hit me. A couple of things hit me like you know, the connection is there. So, um, and and for years I've been saying the greatest thing that I can receive every day is that my feet hit the floor. You know, like he said, we go to sleep. We don't know the next day. We don't know what's coming for us the next day. So long as my feet still hit the floor, I still want to be a force to be reckoned with. Peace. Peace. Tony, Tony, make sure you get that cold crush tape. <laughs> make sure you understand what it is straight yes, up. Yes, indeed. And see, Tony just breezed over. He said the Brothers Disco yep. first, which is the original back in the day joint. Then funky four plus one more. Don't just breeze over that. That's Shout really out the whole crew yeah. uh, and KK Rockwell. Actually, there's a book uh, Joe Conso put out called "Born in the Bronx," yeah. and uh, there's a lot of pictures, young pictures of you, her, but but Joe Conso in as our official photographer. He was 16. Right. No, no hip hop, no street life, nothing. I had to sit down with his mother and say he's mm. protected. Mm. I'll make sure he get home. He had a 
He had two bathrooms. One bathroom was his dark room. Mm. And I wound up coming into South Rasta High School, and he was a photographer there at 16. Mm. So I took him under my wings. He didn't he didn't have the wit all. Right. I gave him that. Right. I put him in that position. Right. But they don't tell that. No. They don't know that. I put Buddy Esquire in that position. Right. Don't know Buddy that. Esquire is the Fire King that became the Flyer King. He did flyers, hip hop flyers. And right. he became the Flyer King. King. The back in the days, all not all, but most of we could pretty much say 90% of the classic hip hop shows, Cold Crush shows. Uh, Grandmaster Flash Furious Five yeah. shows, others, um, uh, everybody ran to Esquire yeah. uh, uh, to get that done. You know, and, and this is the point, and this is why we are honored to have you here, because, you know, I like to surround myself with scholars, not just talented people, but those who are actually there, know what it is, can actually teach our kids something, uh, because you are actually there. Uh, you know, this is different from reading the book. You can always, you know, there's a bunch of books with Tony Toe in it. Uh, there's a bunch of them, but we got the dude right here with us and can ask any question pertaining to that time. And as a matter of fact, you know, um, we'll, we'll wait on it. Maybe I'll do it next week. We won't do it now because we, we, we have videos to shoot today. Uh, but maybe we'll open a Q&A session. Those that, that want to talk to Tone just before next week, we open up a, an hour Q&A to ask what, you know, those that have questions that want to ask Tone questions, uh, uh, strictly for Temple members, um, you know, about the time, about how he became who he was or is, uh, and so on. And, and, and I, uh, you know, this is, you know, Kaz was telling me things like back in the days to even be a rapper, you had to come with your own sound system. Well, and, well I, 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 Try to break it down to people. No MC had his own right crew sound system. sound system. Right, Cass was one of the few that tried to mm -hmm. join those ranks. Wasn't he, he, his crew? He was good, but his crew wasn't good. Right. Um, Cass, I I was down with breakout. Cass, I knew Cass, and he used he asked me how much would it cost for me to get breakout to play with me, do a party with me. So I hooked that up. Mm -hmm. Big Bang Hank. I taught Russell Simmons. I'm in the fever. We coming in the fever and Russell would, would Greg me in the back and say, explain to me what y'all doing. Mm. You know what? I think you might need to close your mouth. At this point. <laughs> because too many files are getting pulled right while the knowledge is getting spoken. Uh, we're gonna cut this off right now <laughs> and, and have more of a private conversation. But yo, this is the Temple of Hip Hop. Take us out. Word. Okay, this is the affirmation for those who are uh, sure. keeping up with our affirmations right here. I am real and I am eternal. Death, as in the end, is an illusion. Is an illusion. Sickness. As in deterioration, is an illusion. Poverty, as in lacking, is an illusion. Is an illusion. All that the universe is. All that the universe is. I am. I am. All that the universe has. All that the universe has. I have. I have. All that the universe does. All that the universe does. I am doing. I'm doing it right now. Go with the flow. I'm going. Be patient. I am. Keep it moving. We just did. Peace. Peace. There it is.